vigilant day and night. Superheroes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I got I got Secret Wars number eleven and twelve. I got them for free. Someone just I, gave them to me. Like I just had goosebumps because I have I have that set up in my in my attic, and I know yeah. that's Doctor Doom there on your on your right. It and is there again. I think in the on your left is it, is that him? Yeah. Down this, on one, this is 11, the face of doom, and that's 12. That's doom. Ah, oh, you know, I love, I love that, that, that strain of those stories so much. Um, and they, and then they did a new, a newer one, didn't they? Marvel did an updated version of, yes, of the Secret Wars. And, I, and I'm not sure how much of that I actually remember, but it's kind of like you're watching, you, what you know is history being rewritten in front of your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and you're having to undo all that you remember just to appreciate what they're doing. Um but yeah that's yeah that's 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 got me thinking a lot about the um what they're bringing because I know yeah. I know they're working on that. I gotta show you what I got in the mail today. I'm going to be doing an Ahsoka cosplay here soon and uh Brian Sype the makeup artist, he's been helping me with it. Like <clears throat> I have all his, he gave me a set notes last year, but I was like, all right, I'm going to start trying to get some of this stuff. He's like, all right. And he would tell me, well, just get this one. Don't get the whole palette or you could cheat on this one and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I told him I want to build the Leku also, you know, the tails. Yeah. And so he's looking up like what kind of specific color shade of blue her markings are. So first I got, I got a wave cap. Nice. No, well, of course. My <laughs> wave cap. And I've got like this swimmer's cap I'm going to put on so I can mold it with this. Right. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so when, excuse me, when we're done today, that's what I'm going to be doing. And I think Amelia is a little too excited to what? She doesn't want to do it. Now she's <laughs> So I'll be doing that by myself. How are you going to do that by yourself? I've had my head done. I've had my whole body done and it's taken a team. I painted my whole self green. <laughs> I can handle this. I just needed Dave for a couple of things. Like, come here. Can you get my back? Like right here. <laughs> um, let me answer this. Yeah, I have really long handled paintbrushes and I just go. But now I'm going to pin my hair up and put on the swimmer's cap. Right. So it holds it real tight. And then I'm going to put the wave cap on top of it. Okay. And I'm going to make a cap out of the foam, the foam right. clay. Yeah. You know, and then I'm going to sit it on a styrofoam head, let it dry. And that way I have something to build off of later. So, what so I'm gonna you, do so when you've got when you've got the um the diver's cap yeah. this, and then and then the mesh cap on top, how are you going to you're just gonna just be applying it yourself and just kind yeah. of directly onto the wave cap so it adheres okay. to the wave cap so it makes 
a cap. Yeah. And then I'm going to put like three lumped nodules right here that kind of taper. Uh, Leku. Yeah. And then once that dries, I'm going to use white spandex and polyfill to finish out the rest of the Leku and then paint with fabric paint directly on top of it. So I I'm, can I'm excited to see that. I'm stoked. <laughs> My blue contacts should be coming in any day now. Like the company that sent it to me, um, like they didn't realize it was in the United States at first. So they emailed me like, we're very sorry, but this is going to take quite a while. <laughs> and you, you know right away that they're British because they're super polite as they're telling you you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> like, Listen, dumbass, did you not check the postal codes and such? <laughs> Quit yelling at us. We're in Great Britain. We're having shipping issues. Deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> and, and that's internally as well. So that's, yeah. My lashes are on weird. So one eye looks like a totally different shape. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we go any further, let's do um, an intro real quick. Okay. So uh, I don't forget because I've done that before that I have to go back and record it by myself. <laughs> um, One is a lonely <laughs> number that you live. <laughs> that's a dude. That's a dude. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't be surprised if we hear that on um, Willow as well. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm just guessing. They've been dropping, <laughs> dropping some tunes. I've been loving those tunes. Hey, um, I uh, on your birthday, I, I scolded Force Geeks for you. Because <laughs> they told everyone your age. I was like, excuse me. Mr. Details is not an individual who identifies as aging in years. <laughs> what age is they got on there? Because no one has the right age. So that's not the right age? <laughs> what age did they say? 46. No, that's not the right age. <laughs> but, but they, but they did that. I think they did that the year before, and um, I said something like, um, "I'm sure, I'm sure." I, what did I say? I said something like, um, "I'd have to, I'd have to be come come clean about my age at some point." But but they're going from the only source that's out there, and um, yeah, there, there have been a few since the band. <laughs> I'm just gonna ask your mama. <laughs> <laughs> She'll tell me. <laughs> Mom will know. <laughs> I'll tell her to fake having Alzheimer's or something. Is that, I don't know. <laughs> no, use the force now. Use the force. Here. <laughs> Back on Comics and Cosmetics for his third appearance. Ladies and gentlemen, nerdlings of all shapes and sizes, ages are those who don't identify as aging. I give you, once again, Mr. Details. <laughs> Welcome back, my friend. Welcome back. It's good to be back. So good to see you. It's good to see you. Now, I've I've threatened you that, uh, <laughs> That's that we're all going to... Right now. <laughs> That we're all going to get passports this coming year. Like, that's a goal. Our goal is to get passports. And the first stop we're making is to come visit. Absolutely. I've got to sweat out mine. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I need to get over yeah, that. Because we need you to come visit here, too. Amelia will drag you to school. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to an American school before. It's very interesting. There are, there are classes that I've never heard of. I sat, oh, yeah? there, I sat there once. Um, and the and the teacher just assumed that I would know this. Said, "Oh, do you, do you know? Do you do you take this this class in in um in the UK? I'm like, what class is that? And geometry." I said, "I have no idea what you're talking." About. <laughs> you know what? Neither do I. It's had anything to do with math? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so you saw my post about uh, Neil Adams' son, Josh Adams. Do you you know who Neil Adams is, right? <laughs> I got I gotta praise you. I gotta praise you. The thing is, is that you said you mentioned that oh you just so happened to mention that he's a fan of the show. <laughs> he me this because I you know I I've taken your advice and 
if I come across a Twitter profile and I'm like, oh, I'd like to talk to that person, whether or not they know I exist. So I'll shoot him a message. Um, I, I've sent messages to Jack Kirby's grandson, um, Athena Finger. That paid off. <laughs> I had to talk to Athena Finger. And uh, then I came across Josh Adams. Now, a friend, a friend. <laughs> Bat and, fever. Bat fever. <laughs> So I sent him a message and I let him know that, you know, I had interviewed Athena Finger recently and I would, I would love to talk to him. And he answered almost, well, first he subscribed to my channel. I got alert and it said, Josh Adams has subscribed to your channel. And I was like, is this the same <laughs> person? And then he messaged me and said that, oh, I'd love to do your show. You know, just give me some topic ideas and, and then he messaged me again. It was a really long message and I'll have to send it to you privately. And he said that um, he loved my channel. He said, your videos are very well done. I watched your whole Athena Finger interview and it's a really good interview. You very, very clearly put a lot of work into your episodes. And I feel like you have a very strong foundation and, and roots that could, like he said, it, he just sees me being successful at it. And I was just like, this is a Pulitzer Prize winning <laughs> comic book artist. He writes the Doctor Who. He 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 pencils the Doctor Who comics, Stargate, um, Eureka, uh, Green Arrow, Rebirth. Oh, gosh. Star Trek. He did some did special editions. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he's he's working on developing his own his own comic right now. And I was like, I had no idea who I was talking to. That is so <laughs> that's this guy's so awesome. I've talked to him a bit and uh, he's a really nice guy, um really talented artist and was very forgiving of me being a giant weirdo fangirl. So <laughs> <laughs> I uh we have a tentative tentative scheduled interview next friday so i'm pretty stoked oh that's brilliant that's brilliant that's and what's clear. crazy is that the night before i had just finished writing my script for my batman silver age breakdown and i was just writing about his dad like i wrote 14 pages and and there was a good chunk about neil adams because let's face it neil adams invented how we see batman today with the furrowed brow and the long ears and the real flowy cape like okay. that that was that, him that, that was that was what i was i found hard to take a jump to because i remember everything switching to um frank miller and and mm. things like that and uh that's not who I grew up with that kind of stage. Well, you know? no, not unless you were born in 1964. Well, <laughs> well, well, there weren't like, newspapers, there weren't throwaways, right? You, you would keep these things or or you'd go into a comic store and it would be sitting there because, you know, and it'd been sitting there for years. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like um, in America where you had, you had a lot of, uh, a big crowd tracking down certain numbers and things like that. There were just news agents, you know, convenience stores, and they would have their magazine sections and and sometimes they would have their comic book sections. Mm -hmm. And um, you'd go in, I'd go in and look at look for the, the best cover I could find and then open it just to check that it's not in black and white and then take it. <laughs> I'll pay for it as well. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it, those, those shapes and those dark and, um, blacks and those and those was it like almost dark cobalt cobalt mm -hmm. yeah. you know that's batman i mean i have a yeah I have a, cut, I have a i have a mug you know um in those colors from for batman still yeah i love batman and there's just so many so many layers to batman to love you know so many different facets about the character about gotham about how the character came into being in the first place, you know, the, the Bob Kane, Bill Finger thing. It's all yeah. of it is just fascinating. I, every single character in, in the Batman comics can be based on one form or another of, of a psychosis. Yeah. Uh, there's just too much to relate to 
with Batman, with Robin even. And it really makes you ask the question. And this is what I loved about Bill Finger's Batman when, when he first came out, you, the very first Batman. A right. lot of people don't know Batman was killing people every page, right? be it on accident or, you know, on purpose. But it, those books made you ask the question, what kind of person? goes out at night dressed in a bat costume and fights criminals like who does that mentally <laughs> spiritually well, well, yeah, well even from that idea it kind of evolves doesn't it it comes yeah. like it starts off as vengeance doesn't it yes you know and then we look into what is causing that vengeance why didn't you just let it go man <laughs> you know and you realize there's something deeper there he's, he's someone who has severe post-traumatic stress disorder he's someone that um lives in his trauma he's never moved past it you know there's a thing we say where it's okay to visit but you can't live there yeah you know you can you can remember what happened but you can't keep it there all the time and batman lives there he lives there batman is who he really well, 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 is, well, I, think is the mask. I, think, I think it's kind of it's always there's that psychosis you're talking about that mm -hmm. he, he slips into you know um and that and it's like i i love all the batman or the batmen that have played batman mm -hmm. um but my biggest shock in terms of being able to identify not having a psychosis, but being you know, identified with this guy who does what he does, um, was watching um, uh, Michael Keaton's film as, as, as Bruce Wayne. Yeah. It was, it was that mansion sequence that was just like, he, he was completely lost, you know, but that's the world that he lived in. But the one, the one world that he did know was the night, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. Bruce, that Bruce Wayne, his his interpretation of Bruce Wayne made Batman um, believable for me. Yeah. On the screen, especially how brutal some of those fight scenes looked, how yeah. cool they looked, you know? I, I tell everyone uh, that I talk to Batman with, t talk to Batman, but yeah, talk about Batman with. There we go. Words are hard. <laughs> um, I, I tell everyone this same story that I remember when I was very little, uh, the moment I realized that Bruce Wayne and Batman were the same person and I was watching the Adam West series and they had Bruce Wayne on this conveyor belt, you know, tune in next time for the conclusion of, yeah. and I realized like, Oh my gosh, they're the same. So I go running into the dining room yelling for my dad, I'm like dad, 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 did you know that Batman is Bruce Willis. <laughs> and my dad just kind of looks at me and he chuckles. He's like, it's Wayne, honey, Bruce Wayne. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And he said it was Bruce Willis. Brilliant. Brilliant. I would have loved to have seen him play it, you know, in his younger days. Yeah. But Poor yeah. Guy, yeah. But you but one thing before before you go, it's mm -hmm. it's you mentioned Robin. Robin was was the character one character that I um lost track of. Yeah. You know, because I went I went from being a I think it was a, a Superman fan. It was it was Batman and Superman at the same time because Adam West and they were showing reruns and all that type of stuff. Um and in, when I went into comics, it was I think Batman was the first one I let go because I I couldn't under I couldn't understand those stories. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was seeing lurking about whatever, and it just it, I couldn't understand that concept. Um, and that's when I gravitated to Superman, who's completely the opposite. And then it was like, oh, everybody had anybody had Kryptonite. You know, so I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this got boring real quick. And I put that down, and then, and then I picked up Spider Man, um, mm -hmm. and never let, never put it down, and went and was reinvigorated through McFarlane's work. Um, but uh, I always have a have a have a connection to Batman and to Superman, so I'm always interested in 
um, where they're going, how they're being depicted and things like that. And how many errors of Superman we're going to have to let go and just, <laughs> you know? Hey, I, I know a lot of people are really pissed at James Gunn right now, but I have faith. I have faith. How I look at it is it's like right before Christmas every year, my mom would have us go through all our toys and wow. toss out you know, throw away whatever was broken or what have you and donate whatever we didn't play with anymore to make room for the shiny new toys we were going to get for Christmas. We didn't know what we were getting. We just knew it was going to be something new and better than what we had. Yeah. And I feel like James Gunn is doing that. He's dumping out the toy box. He's and he has flat out said, we're going to keep what works. And then we're going to toss out what doesn't. The reason why him and Peter Saffron got hired in the positions they're in is because they're the only ones who put out content for Warner Brothers in DC that worked. Peter Saffron produced the Shazam movies and Aquaman. And James Gunn produced, wrote, directed Suicide, the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. Yeah. Saffron produced those as well. So, of course, they're going to hire them for these positions, especially with James Gunn having the history with Kevin Feige in the MCU and being ultra successful over there. So, yeah, they're probably going to keep the Peacemaker characters. They're probably going to keep Shazam characters and the Suicide Squad characters because those are the ones that worked. Not because they're necessarily James Gunn's characters and he wants to keep them, but because they worked. Yeah, and also you've got to need you've got to have these characters to right. help and, build the world you're rebuilding. You know, right? And he's okay. We've we don't have um, Jason Momoa as Aquaman anymore after the third Aquaman movie. Oh well, we will survive. Uh, we don't have Henry Cavill anymore as Superman. Um, we don't have Ben Affleck anymore as Batman. We may or may not have Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman anymore. And people are losing their minds over it. And yeah, I thought Henry Cavill was an awesome Superman. He was the best Superman. Gal Gadot was a good Wonder Woman. But it doesn't mean that James Gunn's just tossing him out and he's just going to give us crap. Oh, no, no. And we want the DCU fixed. But it's not like we can just go, okay, I've pressed the fix button. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that button was that button was pressed a good few years ago um, mm -hmm. with the declining um, relationship between uh, Warner and and Zack Snyder's team. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> they they went off to tell that story that they were never ever going to be able to fin finish. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and and in doing so, Maybe it was, it's like separating yourself from the studio that that want to fund and make these and be a part of the stories, you know. So at, at the same time, it's like we had it's nice because we having these things that, that are bite sized mm -hmm. and, and things like that. You know, we went through Tommy Maguire, we had Andrew Garfield, you know, um, and mentioned the Batman, you know. So in this in this age, shall we say, they are. Um, rebuilding a universe that is cohesive yes yeah and to yeah. do that you it's you okay it's time to start fresh yeah you know, gotta turn the fat. You, yeah you know and it's just like okay that was then we've we've, we've had that era now mm -hmm. um i think what people were hoping is that um ben affleck was transferable or or henry cavill work was transferable and things like that and and that's just when it's hard to let go of when something is done. I think a lot of people thought that he was going to instantly reinstate or restore the Snyder verse, um, make the justice league, the Zack Snyder justice league canon. Really? And no. yeah, a lot of people really I, thought he was going to do that. Okay. And, uh, and that, I guess that was a possibility because uh, honestly, his, the suicide squad and peacemaker are in that you know that realm okay. momoa and 
Ezra Miller showed up in the season finale of Peace. Oh, that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. They did. They did. Mm-hmm. Um, but James Gunn is an incredibly brilliant and creative man. And he started off at Trope Studios learning from the master of stretching a dollar. Like, right. who he studied um, under. This is amazing. Okay. <laughs> you will know. This is how James Gunn got his start in like B movie horror movies under um and his name is escaping me right now for some reason it's a long day um his the guy who owned the studio was known in the industry for making something amazing out of nothing kind of like uh before i started expanding my vfx makeup artist skills i started off with making zombie skin out of toilet paper and Elmer's glue and paint and makeup. You know, I learned how to make my own fake skin out of wax, Vaseline, foundation, cellulose, you know, whip it up together. And, but you start there, but you can make something amazing out of very small materials, materials you would never think of. Well, that's James Gunn. (laughs) Well, that's that's James Gunn. That's how he got his start. And Warner Brothers is bankrupt. They're broke. They have nothing. In yeah, fact, um, I've talked to a lot of people, and the word on the street is that Zaslav is probably going to sell DC off at some point in the next couple of years. So Saffron and Gunn are kind of on this clock. Okay. And it's not like we need something now, go make money now. It's show us your plan. We want to believe it's going to work. We don't want good enough anymore. We don't want close enough to government work anymore. We want actual good quality comic book content. That's what we want. We want to be able to compete with the MCU. No more of this. Okay, we're going to compete with them by playing their own game, but changing the rules. No, that shit doesn't work. And also, and also they need to have 100% control over the narrative. And exactly. If the narrative is created by somebody else or is started in another area. Um, it's not going to work. It's not going to gel. And I think, <clears throat> excuse me, that's why, you know, um, Black Adam is probably the the end of that line, yeah. you know, of that entire line, yeah. you know, um, and the inclusion of Henry Cavill um, as honoured as it was a cameo to to, to be, um, signed off. That was, you know, um, yeah, there's hope for a future and the fans are like. <gasps> I know. They're, and it drove me crazy because it's like listening to my children. <laughs> it's like you, we have all, we have all been clamoring for the studios to take dc live action films seriously yeah and you know not i don't mean like drama and stuff like that but i mean not treat it like it's something for kids and just slap something together and push it out there yeah we've been begging for this we've been begging for someone good to come along who knows what they're doing who's creative who's capable who has experience and can actually give DC what it deserves. And now we have that, but unfortunately you can't just say mush and then make it happen. I thought like, you, say you can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs. <laughs> exactly. And here, you know, people are like, well, Patty, there's no wonder woman three anymore. No one. No, 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 no. That was never said. What happened was, and, Dave's sister sent me the article about it. And I said, I don't even need to open it. I know what it says. And she's like, all right, smarty. What does it say? And I said, it says that Patty Jenkins, that James Gunn calls Patty Jenkins and said, Hey, you've been working on the script for a while. Let me see it. She's like, okay. So she shows up with the script. She's like, here's my script for wonder woman three slaps it on the desk. And James Gunn, James Gunn does this. He goes, okay. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I, okay yeah um well, <laughs> he 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 hands it back to her and says this isn't good enough this isn't going to work so nah, we'll either be- rewrite it the way 
to to our to the quality level we expect or we're just going to have to get someone else on the project and patty jenkins says i'm not rewriting anything and james gunn was like well uh thank you for your time have a nice day and that was it that's what happened patty jenkins didn't want to rewrite it she didn't want to play ball so they said we're just going to have to attach someone else to the project and i don't blame them the first wonder woman was amazing but that nonsense right there heartbreaking i didn't want to watch a chick flick about a girl who was sad about her boyfriend and had some very questionable ideas about consent i wanted to watch a wonder woman movie wonder woman's a diplomat and a warrior it, there it just didn't make any sense and it looked really cheesy it looked really low production and she's like guys it's wonder woman 84 it was supposed to mimic the richard donner films and look like it was made in 1984 and i wanted to say like not for one moment did i think it was a richard oh, not i know sure. okay. i know and okay. i was like you know miss jenkins patty have you ever heard the saying if you have to explain the joke it's not funny like if you have to tell us that it was supposed to look like it was made in 1984, then I don't think you achieved your goal. <laughs> well, 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 let's put it this way. Look, the, the way it was set, it was set in 1984. Fine. Um, the, it was, it was, was it the story that was, that was, Everything. yeah, that, that, that was. So I have the book. I'm not sure. Um, right here uh my friend gave it to me for my birthday and it's my favorite wonder woman story um oh, i'm not gonna grab it anyway it's it was uh the one where she kills maxwell lord and um okay. that's what that. that's what the movie was based on oh, it, it was a really really <laughs> important book because she's the only hero in the justice league that has killed another human being and the I reason just knew this. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Now I've got to find it. Hold on. Oh, so I never knew this. You're killing me, man. How do you not know this? Hey, look, when I picked up Spider Man, I walked into that comic book store after that, or that yeah. convenience store, and that's all um, I picked up. <laughs> it's, um, it's Superman something. Where? It's over there somewhere, or it's on my other shelf. I have so many. Anyway, uh, in this comic, Maxwell Lord is an incredibly powerful telepath. Okay. And he can control minds as well. So he starts mind controlling Superman and the Justice League. And they're going all over and he's on worldwide television controlling people. And he's got Superman and the Justice League going all over the world, killing people and destroying things. So Wonder Woman had no choice. She ended up you know, flying to the studio and slid behind him while he was on camera and slit, I'm mean, not slit, but snapped his neck on television because it was the only way she could get him to stop mind control. I mean, how, how do you get right. someone to stop mind controlling someone? Right. Yeah. So it was really, really, really important book, really important. So not only did they take that away in Wonder Woman 84, like, Oh, she saved the day with logic and reason and talked the psychopath down. Look, y'all, have you gotten in any arguments on Twitter or Facebook lately? Well, have well, you won that, any of them? That's very similar to the fan reaction to Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah. You know, um, and, and, I, and I get that because I, I, I knew the comic, you know, um, and I, and I rewatched mm. comic, is it comic story or something? yes yeah that dude I'd, I'd watch something like that and um and i completely got it you know and i but when i watch some of these things i have to i always step back and, and say well if that must be the new narrative they want for the kids you know and i have to let go of any attachments um which is easier to do when you've got other sources to to, to go for and look at mm -hmm. um that are older but it's it, it it's been a mess i don't know it seems like it's been a fighting mess for for dc for a while yeah. um and it's a bit like this disney and lucas film thing where 
the fans will be screaming at um uh at, at, at Lucas okay. um, at Lucasfilm when it's a Disney decision or do you know what I mean? Uh, um, yeah. yeah, 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 or yeah, well, her, you know. Uh, <laughs> all the time, poor, poor thing, man. But it's, Oh yes, poor thing. Poor, you know. very wealthy, powerful thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> She's rebuilding childhoods, man. She's rebuilding. Hey, but, she yeah. did, she did do Gremlins. And Battery's okay. not included. And Battery's not included, which, mm -hmm. Very close to my heart and amazing stories. She did that series too. Yeah, so. but you know, it's, it's 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 when when things are just misdirected, you know. And it's it's always been a thought of mine is, is which is, well, who's dictating to who? Is DC saying this is what we want, or is Warner saying this is what we want? Because I I, I can't Warner? find. It. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's you know, it, you know, and, and that's been the problem. You know, even what the new movie, The The Batman, was so good. Mm -hmm. So good. And and I spotted it straight away. I'm like, this is like it was written by the guys who write the games. It you was know? um it was like Earth Two and Year One mashed together. It was so good. It yeah. it was so reminiscent of uh Bill Fingers Batman when he first came out. I talked to Athena about it, Bill's granddaughter, who's yeah. I mean, who, she's the expert on Batman here. <laughs> like, uh, and uh, when I asked her what she thought about it, she said, it was too long. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, it was good, but <laughs> kept going. Like, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. She was at the premiere and uh, she was waiting for her chance to go up and talk to Robert Pattinson and say, you know, hey, you did a good job. My grandfather would love it. And she's waiting for a chance. And she said he just happened to walk right past her, like right in front of her. She's like, I just grabbed him. <laughs> she just reached out and grabbed Robert Pattinson by the arm and pulled him. He's like, hey, come here. <laughs> I think you have to be right. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I watched um some. Have you ever watched any Jack Whitehall stand up? He's. The British, British comedian, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He went to school with Robert Pattinson, and he's got a lot of bitterness because Robert Patts was always winning all the roles in drama class and stuff, and it made him mad. But then they they both get these careers and everything, and he says their their moms will run into each other at the store, and like, oh well, you know, Jack, he's doing this. I'm like, oh, did you know Robert's the Batman? And he went up for this role and uh, he says, I swear to God, the email says we're looking for a more Robert Pattinson type. And he's like, got me again. <laughs> but anyway, oh my speaking, of, wow. speaking of life in, uh, in the UK, how have you been? We just got, uh, we just started talking about comic books. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know anyone that talks about comics about, about me this. either. <laughs> Why Dave made me start this channel? Remember? You damn right. <laughs> <laughs> so, the first time you came on the show was almost exactly a year ago. It was January 9th. And look how well you're doing. <laughs> I, was like, I had maybe. I think I had like 11 to 15 subscribers the first time you came on the show. And as of last night, I'm at 501. So super excited. <laughs> yes. but, um, had, you, so you, had you not uh, nagged me to death about getting on Twitter, I probably wouldn't have gotten 500 something subscribers so thank you for being relentless i'm a hypocrite and, because i'm i'm very i'm very terrible with twitter <laughs> yeah, you're never on twitter <laughs> but no you introduced me to this whole community and i've made a lot of friends and a lot of connections and none of that would have happened without you so thank or, you very much or you've taken that leap you know so yeah Oh, I am definitely taking a leap now, my friend. As of today, I'm officially retired as a stylist and I'm a YouTuber full time. 
I hope so, you guys have a bowl there to celebrate later. <laughs> you know I do. <laughs> I, we actually I sat, up. <laughs> we smoked a bowl in the salon as we were getting ready to leave. It was like three of us were like, let's do it. And then I was like, oh no, guys, I have to drive. <laughs> I swear. I was, and and of course, this, this sheriff's truck canine <laughs> unit was driving in front of me the whole way home. Maybe they knew I'm, I'm guiding you there. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. But this is the new studio. There's going to be some more changes. Um, Dave's building me a skateboard shelf. Okay. The one this side. Right. Kirby, you're not facing the right way. There we go. That's a little better. I got Thing here holding my shears. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, yes. But what if now hold on? I'm going to back up a little bit because, all right. So January 9th, you came on the show for the first time. You were my very first guest on the show. My very first interview, very first industry insider. <laughs> and um, a few months later, you know, you were in and out. Like normally you and I will text each other or text with Dave and, you know, every once in a while, but we hadn't heard from you in a while and Dave would check in on you or it was around the time it was book of Boba Fett. And I kept sending you stuff. We were talking mm -hmm. about Cad Bane and stuff. And Dave's like, I haven't heard anything, but the last time I talked to him, he said he was filming on location. And I remember I dropped my pen and I looked at him and I was like, Oh, it's going to be one of the star Wars shows. Is he going to be one of the star Wars shows? He's like, I don't know. He didn't tell me. Like, whatever. <laughs> so you called me one day, um, FaceTimed me and we were talking and I guessed, I figured out what you were up to. And I sat, we scheduled this interview right then and there. So almost a year ago, we scheduled this interview, like right then and there. And uh, I kept my mouth shut the entire time. It was torture <laughs> absolute torture I, you I, learn to love it you really do <laughs> and when when you told me what you were doing i mean i just immediately had flashbacks to me being like 16 years old in my room and putting a vhs into my vcr and just hitting autoplay and I would let this particular movie, I would watch it like over and over again all day. I would just let it automatically rewind and start playing again. I know that movie back to front. Yeah. It's it's one of my favorites. And I was like, oh my gosh, my friend is going to be in this show that's a sequel to one of my favorite all-time movies. And finally, last month, or no, it was earlier that, no, it was last month. It was the 30th. It was a month ago. The show finally comes out and I was watching my friend's live stream and they happened to be reading uh, the credits for this particular show. Again, I still hadn't said a word. I didn't want to say anything until the episode came out. So he's reading the credits and he goes, oh, and Danny's friend details is in the Willow series. And I was like, shut <laughs> <laughs> WIMDB. You're like, oh, oh, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, is he? That's great. So, as of this recording, episode six, The Prisoners of Skellen, has come out this week. So, Wednesday, the episode came out and you know, I had started making predictions with episode one about your character. And I was like, is it a bad guy? And you're like, no. I'm like, liar. <laughs> Why do you think I'm one of the bad guys? Because of the way they move. <laughs> They're very well choreographed. Bad guys never think, never think of themselves as being bad. They're always doing something. <laughs> They're very <laughs> true. <laughs> Evil justifies itself. Uh, but in episode six, 
as soon as you came on screen, I knew it was you. <laughs> Hang on. Is that a compliment or? <laughs> it's a compliment. But when Saris and Falcon came on screen, I was like, oh, because one, it's a creature. You're a creature actor. Okay. So that's what I was looking for. Uh, but I was very pleasantly surprised that it wasn't a giant helmet like Quay. Yeah. I as could cool see as that was. <laughs> I could see your bone structure. Right. Your eyes. Yeah. Um, but as soon as he spoke, <laughs> I was like, and it's his voice. Yes. I was so excited. Chop him up and feed him to the dogs. I love it. That's that's my favorite line. That's the that's the first the first line that um Tom and I were reading, first scene Tom and I were reading for Philippa. And um at that point we'd had no um shape of, of who these characters were. All I could imagine was Pinky and the Brain and <laughs> you know, you know, and of mice and men. So I'm like, okay, I get it. I, I know the evolving hierarchy. And um, it was a lot more RP. And then as soon as I did, th and she says, oh, no, 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 I was thinking more and more American. And I just did that and she said, right. And then we just moved on. And I heard I, a little bit, a touch that? of Jamaican. I heard um, just a touch of Jamaican. No, it was. I will it find it and I will show you, but there's this like one syllable. <laughs> No, <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. I'll take I'll find that. It and I'll, I'll show that. you. I'll take that. Um, but it, you did. You did fantastic. And you know, normally in these, they say with with comedy, you need a straight man. You have to have your silly one, and you have to have the straight man. But between you and Tom, it's hard to tell who was playing the straight man. But it still worked. It was so funny. Um, maybe I'd say you were more of the straight man because he's more of the okay guys so here's what we're gonna do no nice see i wouldn't have said that falcon i would have said their clothes are unique and stylish and normally not you know not something you see around here if reading that scene you see, um i'm looking at pinky and the brain i'm just that's what i'm like it's but it's it's the fact that it was comedic and i love comedy yeah and to to play it to have to play it so thoroughly straight. And so, um, uh, what's the word? Um, un unconscious of, of, of what he's talking about. Yeah. You know, yeah. That. And, and in those scenes, it's like, there may be one or two lines leading into that, you know, and you may play around with the dialogue a little bit, you know, maybe in the warm up or whatever sticks, sticks. And, um, there's that one scene in a tunnel when he says, yeah. And when I said explain, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm an imbecile, you know, <laughs> just as it cuts, mm -hmm. I, I look down and that's because we, uh, that's not where we ended the scene. We ended the scene where as soon as he says that he walks off and I'm looking down and I look up from my I whether I've got what he said or not. But it's how it's when you're filming these sequences and you know what number of scenes you're doing, you know how quick it's moving. Mm -hmm. you know? And then you're thinking, OK, I'm getting the pace of this humor now, you know, and it was just, you know, it was just the, flying. It was the just way flying. you moved in everything like you just when <clears throat> when you're when you're thinking about and I I. I doubt that it's actually while you're doing it a conscious thought but when you're putting this character together in your mind about how he's gonna move and how he's gonna lift his head and was what was the inspiration behind how falcon moved his mannerisms his energy that, that comes from the coach man that comes from the coach now it's derek arnold derek arnold's been a creature performer with star wars for for as long as i've been there you know, mm -hmm. I think it was Tom and Derek who I first met walking into Pinewood Studios. And I was with Tom. So it was Tom and Derek and it was mm -hmm. Tom and Dee. You know, and I'm with another Tom now, right? I'm with that same Tom. Um, but it was Derek who coached us. And Derek coached 
at least 30 of us that got whittled down to maybe 10 um uh because not everybody can stick at it and they were using a lot of local talent and performers and things like that and so the the whole process started off as breaking it down you know we didn't want to move like apes we didn't want to move like orcs you know um so we had to uh follow a, an evolved instinctive natural um base from which derek put us in from from every single temperament um, to how we thought, certain, how we would stand against certain hierarchies. You know, if you were, if you were the, the, the top dog, so to speak, um, how would those beneath you react around you? Um, and that's filtered throughout every aspect of those trolls. We had three levels, one, two, and three, in terms of um, docile, um, slightly aggressive, to um, really kind of full on. And it was um, the synergy of all of us to stay that way amongst everything normal that was going on. So that took maybe a month or so of um, troll boot camp. Mm -hmm. um, and it, yeah, for that, it helped Tom and I because we knew where we were going to evolve to. Um, for the other performers too, they knew they were going to um, either be playing a lower class to what they were or they were all going to be the same in regards to bottles and, and things like that. Um, in doing that, <clears throat> I, I knew how to, I, I was evolving into um, my interaction with my brother, you know, and how I felt about, my, how, I, how a troll feels about his brother, you know, um, and it's never one. It was never one of these things where, as soon as I take the elixir, if I get more, if I get smarter than him, I'm going to be king. No, it's always that that honoring of that step. <clears throat> so, have I missed something? You guys took an elixir together. Yes. Because, okay, because what I was going to say was what I remember from the first movie. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my allergies. The weather is so up and down here. Okay. My sinuses are not enjoying it. But um, in the first movie, when Mad Mardigan, Willow, and Alora, you know, and the sorcerers, they get to Tiris Lee and it's all run down and they find troll poop everywhere and they <laughs> run into those trolls and they're just like, <laughs> well, then you and Saris come on screen and Saris is talking kind of like, uh, you know, a very inspirational speak motivational speaker you know he just you know what just i have a real problem with nelman and i really appreciate it <laughs> just didn't speak until spoken to okay thanks <laughs> like um and i thought i don't remember them talking so you guys took an elixir yes okay. um it's called the vermiscus um he mentions it while he's torturing um yeah with the worm oh my goodness yeah i'll, yeah, I'll tell you about that as well but um yeah he mentions it there and he takes a swig um borman mentions that that's yes. what it's saying it makes him stronger um but it's all it also in making them stronger and faster it's it's, it's accelerating their brain cells their neurons you know um and um the two that just so happened to be the test subjects for the crone happen to be related and uh yeah, and one's one slightly uh, slightly behind the other. <laughs> well, I took it more as like uh, uh, sometimes Saris would say something, and Falcon would look up at him like, "Oh God!" <laughs> no, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's like there's one like even in the scene where they where they where they were chopping it. It was um, when we have the slave. Sorry, when we have the troll um, guard run in, and he says, um, "There's we've got trouble with um, rabble rousers." <laughs> Things uh, like that. It's like, oh then, yeah, I'm so I hate uh, rousers who rabble. Yes, who rouse rabble. <laughs> yeah, and 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 he says he says, um, "Shall we dispatch them or do something?" Yeah, what you don't see in that threesome is mm -hmm. me me going, 
And as I'm as I'm nodding, he says no. I, I and I'm like no, and I and I shoo him away with the other guy. You know, so, so it's all so, so even if it was was wasn't shown or not, mm-hmm. still giving to the entire scene, so they have the options to chop that pace and get that moving. Um, and yeah, he was. We, we joked about it. It was like, um, who was who was he doing? Who whose voice was he? Almost like a Malkovich um, style yeah. voice he was doing. You know, I say, yeah, maybe they're going to get Malkovich to do your voice. I, I'll probably get Vin Diesel, you know, because I've only got a couple of lines, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and things like that. And um, uh, uh, I mentioned it to one point at John because we're not used to being allowed to keep um, the voices. It's always on the mm-hmm. contract that that would that may happen if it happens you're cool with it and um he didn't seem to have given it any thought so that was that was very promising for us <laughs> and then and then a few months before um it aired we had to we went in to do some adr so i got to see some of it and it hadn't been graded or anything and it looked beautiful i was like okay okay yeah they've they you can tell they've they've pretty much thrown everything into the visuals You know, the um, when Eric is at the immemorial city at that, it's it's breathtaking. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, I do. I have some of my issues with the show so far. That being said, the sixth episode to me is by far the best one. That one, it was it just it felt more like how do I put this more exciting well, we're putting that gear now. It's it's, it's shifting. It's shifting its mm-hmm. gear because we're going into the last couple of episodes, um, and it's it's interesting. You know, it's I think it's the same thing. It's um, with some of the other franchises. It's mm-hmm. like um, it's not allowed to be its, itself and be fresh. You know, um, especially for the age group it's aiming at. It's not the only thing it's giving those people who, who enjoyed it from from when it came out. Is the sentiment ta- sentimental attachment, mm-hmm. you know, um, as they watch over, as presiding over, understanding what's going on, as they give the the tw- the, the twelve year old or family and same fe- um, feeling and value to the new audience, you know, um, <clears throat> and also whether it's this series or and or any or any other series, whenever there's a first series. And I say this other than what's happening in in LA because yeah, <laughs> they just they got that they got that poodoo locked down, right? <laughs> but, 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 but other other than that, every first season of every show is always the pitch. Yeah, yeah, and and the pitch is if you dig this um, and you give us more money, you're gonna get a better set of sequel uh, seasons and so on and so forth. Um, and um yeah some people have patience for it but i've been seeing i've been seeing some um youtubers loving it and 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 even some young young some young girl who has some emo head or whatever talking um no nerd or something um bless her and um but, she, but her reactions are just that's what you want i want i would love to sit down with some kids and say what is this show and hear them giggle and laugh because when when you're saying when people are saying, well, how did that just happen? Well, kids aren't saying that. <laughs> kids are just rolling with it, and that's who it's for, you know. Um, but also, what you're saying about those scenes and those sets where Eric is that one scene where he's walking. You see, you see that profile walking, and you realize it's a it's a level. Mm-hmm. That's that tripped me out because I didn't notice that before, and I was just like, oh wow, this place is immense. Yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, you can. You're, I'm very, I was very much aware with the scenes, like how much they're they're piecing together and 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 doing because they need to get done at a pace and at a budget. You know, all these first seasons are made at a budget, even if even if it's Andor, it's, it's still oh and, yeah, and Andor on a tight budget. Andor, so good. <laughs> that Stellan Skarsgård and Andy Serkis delivering those speeches just. Oof. I was watching. You know, watching Andy Circus give that speech, that speech saying "climb," and it you know cuts and moves to the next scene. And I looked at Dave and I went, "Acting, <laughs> <laughs> so good." Um, when I saw the droid, I said, "I said acting." <laughs> <laughs> 
But I was really tickled that you got to keep your voice that we we got to hear you speak and like you really got to lend your entire being to yeah. this character and really demonstrate not just your your range and your talent with the the physical but also with your voice with the emotion of it and it just we watched it like three times <laughs> oh, me too <laughs> You know, it, it, look, I, I, I give him props to the entire troll team, you know, um, those un, under the masks and those that created it. Like, you brought out the hand thing. Um, one of the girls, um, Grace McCluskey, who was working on my face along with Elvis, another girl called Elvis, um, she did the makeup for the thing, you know, so she was leaving um, Willow to go and do Wednesday. And yeah. I, and that show is absolute. We have a visitor real quick. Come here. Squat down. <laughs> hey, Amelia, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm well, good, I'm good. You had mentioned the makeup artist. What was her name? <clears throat> I think her name is McCluskey. Um, well, and you mentioned that she was she'd left Willow to go work on Wednesday. Yeah. And that perked her up. <laughs> Wednesday is so good. I love that show. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. You know, but it's absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, every time I saw a thing, I was like, oh, she was working. She did. <laughs> she was doing me. She was doing my face before she did you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Grace, um, she did. She worked on that. Grace and Elvis. It was like, with there was a massive troop of us. And there was me and Tom sat um, facing each other with, uh, with the mirrors opposite and two makeup artists normally working on our face at any one time um, from uh, anywhere between four or, or three in the morning. Uh, I'm out. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, listen. Once we, once we got there and I put Prince tunes on, it was all good. <laughs> Played Prince. That's my hey, that's what hey, he wakes me up, man. He gets me going. It's, Prince is baby making music. Not really. <laughs> yes, I'm not gonna say no, but yes, <laughs> but not all of it. Some of it is just monkey making music. <laughs> I've, I've always my son Ashton was born 12 31 99, and I've always told him that you know, tonight we're gonna party like <laughs> so that's your song. He's like, you're so weird. So weird. <laughs> See, that's your fault. You should have put like headphones or the speakers on your tummy at the time. <laughs> I, did all, I did that all the time. <laughs> I did that all the time. I did it uh, for all of my kids. I played a lot of classical music for them too. Oh. Yeah. Played a lot of Bach and Beethoven. You know, the classics. <laughs> 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 and he stuck a con in there, you know. <laughs> Ashton really liked Kid Rock. Oh, okay. I like, it. I like, I like. It. So, I, I just can't get over it. Like, it looked so much like you, but didn't look like you. And I think, I think it was. I mean, really, your bone structure that really stood out, and. You know, I would I was watching it with Amelia. We watched it while we were eating dinner. And it's like she had short term memory loss. Like she's watching it and then she'd say she'd say, Which one's D? And, <laughs> one. and then five seconds later, she points to Tom and she goes, Is that D? I said, No. It's D. Five seconds later, she points to Tom again. Is that D? Like he's talking. I'm recording. Let me finish. <laughs> um, she points to him again and she's like, Is that D? And he's talking. And I said, Why do you keep pointing at the white guy? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I don't have my glasses on, <laughs> but you hear him, right? <laughs> you can totally tell that's D. We I had, we had, um, we've got um, busts made. Yeah, everyone that works at the CFX has, has yeah. a butt. Um, and um, and also, when required, we'll have a full body um, cast done. Um, they've had mine since Force Awakens, you know. So it was like um, when I got the call 
to go in. No, you know? They've just had mine for like seven or eight years. Well, they called me in and they just wanted to check the size and everything like that. And they started measuring up and they're like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the same. Yeah, that's the same. That, that's the same. I, like, I haven't changed. I haven't changed since high school. Right. So, um, brag. Cool. But then, then what happened was it became very clear because they just, everyone kept telling me that before they even went into production, John Kasdan requested me. And I worked with John on solo playing Quay Tolsai. Yeah. You know, and 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 we filmed Quay Tolsai scene twice. Do you know what I mean? Um, and that was a long production, and uh, we we all got we all got through it and bonded on that. And so I I, I at some point had a Skype interview. Well, not an interview, but John wanted to have a chat with me or via Skype. Um, he and he brought Wendy Miracle with him, and um, he was telling me about this role, telling me how they hadn't quite figured out certain things yet. I'm not sure how much was written, but he wanted me to play this troll, and Tom was going to be playing the other one. And um, I could see, you know, he's trying to convince Wendy Miracle that 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 this is going to be a troll and and or whatever, <laughs> you know. And she's and she's trusting him. She's like, okay, if you say so, if you say so, but. Um, it was it was an honor just to have that conversation, and it's an even bigger honor to have been requested to play that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if if they would have given me that otherwise, or it would have gone to somebody else. But when you already have a working relationship, I know what that feels like now. And sort of oh no, because they can they trust that you can deliver. Now, um, that was six months before I even knew that I'd been requested, you know? So it's, you take all that in as you're hearing it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you find out as you're taken around the, 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 the creature um, shop uh, floor workshop and you're seeing, um, I saw the costume for, um, what's the name of, what's the name of the one that turns into a bird that's chasing them? The raven, right? Is it? <coughs> Sorry. You have you have to have the big guy with his head in the cage. Yeah, and then you have the girl. So I saw her outfit there, and then I saw some of the other outfits they were making for the for the trolls that I hadn't met yet. And um, they start explaining what your suit's going to look like as you start being fitted for it. It's going to have a lot of this fur on there, and it's going to have these mutation boils and things because you're drinking this stuff, which mm -hmm. is very intelligent. Um, uh, you're going to be different. You and Tom are different from the others because you've evolved more. So your your fur is more white, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and um, we're going to do a lot more with with your with your faces and things like that. So some of the um, trolls that you see, they had the pylons, you know, that had to be pieced together to put on or whatever. And Tom and I had these faces always pre-made on this on this skull that they would take off and and piece by piece we'll put it in and the nose will go on and i'm sitting there and i'm looking at it and the longer i'm looking at it the more i'm 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 see i'm seeing less of myself and seeing this old this 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 other face of this old dude he just looked like an old dude or sort of you know um at that point and um yeah you then find, you know, before you even get to that, you're finding out bits and pieces and you find out you're going to be required to do things you hadn't done before. I'm like, well, that sounds about right. Neil just tends to know what I can, what I can, and what I can't do. <laughs> right? I'll take it like that. Right. You know? And um, then they tell, say, well, we're going to have to get some teeth made for you um, by, from a company called Fangs. Um, and I'm like, okay, so put me in a car from Pinewood, send me down there to get measured up and all that type of stuff. Um, and then sent me to an opticians because I'm going to be wearing contacts. Mm -hmm. I've never worn contacts before in my life. Really? The thought of having to put something in my eye, <laughs> I'm only cool with that if it's an emergency and a doctor says, hold your eye open or this thing isn't going to come out, <laughs> right? Um, and so I went and, no, I first of all, I spoke to my friend Chris Bartlett in LA mm -hmm. and, and Rachel and got some advice from Rachel because, um, I hadn't told him what that I was doing. But I just said, "Oh, I might need some contacts," and and they and he said, "Oh, oh, he's got his head battle down or whatever." And so got me 
in a place where I, I was comfortable with taking that leap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And I had to, um, some tests done. Oh, I might have put some, I thought I took some pictures. I might have put some up um, of the test lenses. And I was surprised how comfortable they were. Um, yeah, they, they took a while to, to settle down. But when they settled down, they felt comfortable. They're a little bit thicker because I hadn't been painted. But all these little things, you know, I'd never done, really done prosthetics before. I'd just been put, put in something or, or, or had my head screwed into a box or something, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so once that's all on your face, you have plenty of time to find that, 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 that dude, you know, um, with the rehearsal time you get running lines back and forth with Tom and, and stuff like that. You try not to overdo it. And I, I was trying not to overdo it because mine was more about the nuances and just the reactions, you know, and it was it was absolute luxury to to spend more time reacting <laughs> as an actor, you know, in, in a scene that you can contribute to at certain points, you know, um, rather than um, like Tom having to drive it when you're in a scene with Warwick Davis, in a scene with Ruby Cruz, and you're in a scene with Christian Slater. Oh my God, <laughs> you know? I have to say, I had the biggest crush on Christian Slater when I was a teenage girl. And I was like, now I'm one degree from Christian Slater. I'm okay with it. Wasn't he in Gleam in the Cube? Hmm? Gleam in the Cube. Wasn't he in a movie called Gleam in the Cube? I think yes. Yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great movie every skateboarder punk rocker that i know has seen that movie a million times but that movie was came out in the era of the quarries you know yeah. that's why it was seen you know and even can't buy me love with patrick dempsey and mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I'm going there man <laughs> but and, and val kilmer was part of that group which i felt like it was very apropos that slater was cast in this role because we can't have val actually because he's very ill um so what do we do we find another Corey era heartthrob and throw him in there <clears throat> as kind of a it felt like a tribute in a way so anyway <clears throat> but i noticed in the credits that it was val kilmer's son who did the voice of mad martigan coming from that doorway of light so i'm very curious to find out what's going on with that season two's coming right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was that was a pretty emotional he, he pretty was emotional an scene. absolute light on set he was an absolute joy and, and val kilmer's son um um christian, oh, slater. christian slater okay yeah, i didn't see val kilmer's son um, that might have been recorded in LA. Or yeah, something. I think he just re just did voice. Could have done it over the phone. Yeah, um, I think. Uh, yeah, we weren't even in costume. Um, and I was wearing my episode seven um, jacket because it was awesome, and I, that jacket is just warm. And mm -hmm. walking to the uh, to the to the set, and um, as we got there, the doors being opened, and um, the guy held the door open for us and then all of a sudden he says, Ah, oh, Star Wars, I love Star Wars, you know. And as soon as he said that, I I, I I looked at who is just saying, Oh, come on in. Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. I'm like, I'm like, I'm my eyes are slowly, I'm like, that's Christian Slater. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um when we were rehearsing, he was fully engaged. Um, when he was rehearsing the scenes, mm -hmm. um, the energy and the dialogue was always being played with and, and, and things like that. And um, he was no, just on it, just absolutely on it. And, and I had to on several occasions, man, when, 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 he was, when he was talking about the trolls or something like that, I'd warn him and I'd tell him that Chavez had sent me. <laughs> and he and he knew he knew straight away right he knew straight away oh. everybody's got their slate of film but young guns for me no nah, that's just my jam that's just it you know i like all the other stuff but young guns and um i'm there on set with a young gun and 
you know, my career working with Star Wars is has has evolved from Star Wars to being with George, being with George Lucas, with Lucasfilm, mm -hmm. you know, and and that's that's the home, you know, when they can take you because they've worked with you and your team and 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 say, well, okay, we can validate these people. They know how to deliver what we need, you know, when we need it, how we need it. Um, and to be taken from Star Wars to this um, was an absolute dream. I grew up being told fairy tales, read fairy tales before I went to bed, you know, and that was before VHS and before DVDs could do the trick for, for a lot of parents out there, right? So um, my only understanding of Star Wars is because it's a, a fairy tale set in space. I recognize the farm boy, I recognize the wizard. You know, that's all I need to do. You know, I've already seen the bad dude, so I know that's the bad, that's the evil wizard or something or whatever. You know, so I'm I am understanding that premise. Been raised on Ray Harryhausen and and all kinds of stuff. You know, reruns. I wasn't there, black and white man. Yeah, <laughs> honest. I that to um, my notes. <laughs> but but suddenly I'm in this world, you know, and it's got magic. And it's fairy tale, and I get to play a f a fairy tale creature. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like um, uh, people who don't know about fairy tales will look at the trolls in that where they inhabit and say, "Oh, it's Mordor." Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, well, they're, they're trolls down there, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that type of cavern, those types of minds weren't created by Tolkien. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's uh, it, when people say that, I kind of <laughs> I'm like out of time, man. I'm like, OK, I know what area you're coming from. I know. Okay, OK, OK, OK. You know, um, show your age. How, how, how do you picture a troll? <laughs> yeah, you know, or, or you don't recognize the repeating metaphors for for mm -hmm. the characters. This is this is comedy um, adventure for children. You know um, what? You don't recognize it because it's comedy. Fairy tale for children. You only rec you only understand Game of Thrones and and what was on Amazon Rings of something or whatever. I you oh, know power. Yeah, you know you can't say those things aren't good. Great, but what about the kids? Yeah. You know the kids are the ones who are after the fairy tales. You can't hog that. You know if you hog that, where's 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 the future? So being a part of what Lucasfilm do and what Lucasfilm make and create that that inspired me you know had me there 100 percent you know and i'm reuniting with erin oh my goodness <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> you know I, on solo i have to tell you this on solo there were these two moments where um i'd met her when we were doing um fight rehearsals um and i know i didn't do any fighting but you're trained just in case they throw something at you. They want to know what you can handle. Mm -hmm. And she she already had her fight scenes being rehearsed. And there was downtime for a minute. And she was stood there. And I could see her taking it all in. I could see her. I'm like, oh, man, look, this is her first gig. Look what she's doing. So I went over and we were having this chat. Mm -hmm. The next time I saw her again was on, was on Savarine in mm -hmm. South of Spain. You know, and um, and uh, and we and we can, I'm connected there again, and it was the same moment. You you see her all looking around for a minute, you know, and you know when people are taking in because I do, right? And then um, and then after that, she wasn't a part of that promo tour because she was the big reveal in there, you mm -hmm. know, um, and things like that. So I was like, oh man, oh man, she, look, man, she has to get some work. She has to get some work from this, you know, because. Mm -hmm that's what the role gives you when you do something like that and um then i saw him Fal winter, was it falcon, falcon and winter soldier and i was like yes <laughs> i was like yes like, they're not hiding her now mm -hmm. you know and then and then to run into her on this yeah we, we had a reuniting hug when i and and she introduced me to ruby and then i didn't know ruby, um ruby and i were going to be working a scene at the same time a torture scene at the time and <laughs> yeah just the that whole family, that whole family trait. It was what um, Katie at 
that CFX had said to me, he said, look, it's not Star Wars, but it's 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 family. It's still Lucasfilm. And and they they had me anyway, you know. Um and 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 that's what it all means. And so there were these little things, and I'm watching this thing and I'm thinking, wow, I'm I'm so grateful that I can get this, you know, like when they're walking on that lava thing, it reminds me of Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. You know, all they're waiting to do is freeze someone into carbonite. You know, um, there was there was another few um, sequences that were from other films, and I'm like, oh, that's the, oh, okay, homage to Indiana Jones. I'm like, oh, homage. I'm seeing all of these things tied into this thing that's moving at 100 miles an hour, <laughs> right? And then and then they end it with with the Beach Boys. Yes. Oh. When I was a kid growing up and going to be taken to school or nursery or whatever and things like that. Um, radio stations weren't playing like white, black or any other music in between. You just had music. And um, every summer, every summer, like my best summers I, re I remember, you know, as a kid was was going to walk into school, having, having heard it on the radio um, or hearing it on an advert or um, when I'm having my summer holidays, I'm hearing this song, you know, always associated with sunshine. Mm -hmm. yeah and and summers and um it ends with that and i'm like so these these things don't just give you one thing yeah you know or haven't been given me just one thing it's just been layered and saying well, well okay this is a how many tiered piece of cake you're having well, <laughs> they they'll also use certain songs for very specific reasons that we don't realize they're giving us a hint yeah, yeah. so eric is in this immemorial city and he meets this mysterious girl on the other side of a gate and all of a sudden you hear the I you. and then it kicks in i'm digging on good vibrations she's giving me excitations so, good, good vibrations <laughs> Pet Sounds is one of my top five favorite albums of all time. Um, <clears throat> so it leads me to believe that this is a good thing. This person he's met is a good thing. Unless the vibrations they're talking about was. Um, uh, well, the song doesn't say bad vibrations. Yeah. But, yeah. But uh, that I know, <laughs> Bannon was suffering from vibra causing vibrations throughout the whole episode. That's true. That's very true. Dave was like, geez, just someone take the wand from her. I'm like, I don't think it's the wand, honey. <laughs> I have had this idea for a show um, or a series on my channel where it's me and Dave watching the stuff I like and him reacting to it. You know who, you know, Dave. <laughs> he has some of the best quips and one-liners i've ever he is so quick-witted he's hilarious he makes me laugh constantly and some of the stuff he says when i'm watching a marvel movie or a star wars show it just <laughs> so i told him we need why, don't, why, don't, why didn't you do one based on first react his first reactions they there to... are no more first reactions oh, for the no, poor no. guy <laughs> i've made him watch everything all the time but uh, he doesn't exactly pay that close attention to him. Like every once in a while, he'll look up and he's like, well, why doesn't he just hit that switch and then run away? Is it so because then there would be no more show. <laughs> you, it's not real. <laughs> like we're watching it's long it. entertainment. It's fictional exciting. characters. <laughs> oh, I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you. Um, in one of those fittings and rehearsals, um, uh, one of my good friends, um, Serena Knott, was there, and um, she took me to see some of the other guys, like Luke Fisher and and everyone that was there. And um, I saw Martin Rezard. Martin Rezard had created the bust of of um, Saris, and that was the template that was that was always kind of situated in the rehearsal space where we were. Mm -hmm stretching out and 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 doing all these creature stuff and um uh while i was there he, he was showing me this thing because up until that point i think it had been scripted that i was going to handle that grub and i can't deal with those things 
Like I know, I know it's not real, um, but if you paint it and make it look real and then you start moving that thing, it, it, you have to pay me a bit more money. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And so, so I'm um, looking at it and I was, I was really dreading it, you know, and then I think it was that, I think, yeah, the first, yeah, first day we started shooting that, it was designed that I was going to hold it. So when I was holding this tin, I didn't have to, let me turn that off as a reminder. Yeah, I had to turn it um, off. Um, when, um, when I held that tin and he went in to, to, to pull it out, mm -hmm. I couldn't see what was in that tin because I tilted it that way so that he would pull it out. And then when he's showing it to her and I'm off screen, I'm putting the tin back down on the floor, whatever, you know, and um, it was Liam Cook, one of the other creature performers who had, who was green screening, with a rod to make it move right and um it was i could barely tolerate that so i kind of just watched him and i watched ruby <laughs> right and was waiting just get that thing out of the way and and, and who's that oh, adora Dadden. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys so if you're watching the prisoners of skellen episode six of willow note that Falcon D is not looking at the grub <laughs> for personal reasons. <laughs> Self-preservation or reason or crew. You know, well, you never I know. get it. See, that kind of thing doesn't bother me, but cucarachas bother me. Oh, I cannot okay. abide those nasty little things. There are three things that will survive after a nuclear holocaust. Keith Richards, probably <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy, and cucarachas. <laughs> How did you feel about Men in Black with Will Will stepping on of you? I, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. I got to get that out of my mind now. I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> Do you remember that movie in the '90s with Jerry O'Connell, Joe's apartment? Huh? Huh? <laughs> I remember I remember that title. I'm not sure if I saw it. Oh, don't, we're not going to talk about it anymore, but just Google it when we're done. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, you have been a weird, gross, sewer-dwelling, chimera-type creature. And that, that fake puppeted grub was almost too much for you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm an actor, but there's only so much I can take. <laughs> <laughs> Look, listen, listen. <laughs> you know, it gets me every time. Like if I'm watching the, the, the behind the scenes of Empire Strikes Back and how Tom Hamill is just cool with holding a snake. I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> I'm like, I like snakes. I can handle snakes. I can handle spiders. I actually like spiders because they're free pest control. They eat all the nasty disease causing bugs like cucarachas. They eat them and flies and gnats. I can't even say the English word for that bug. So I just keep saying it in Spanish because it grosses me out so bad. The English version of that word is so disgusting to me. I can't even say it. So I just say cucaracha. <laughs> it's so gross. Careful, uh, you're careful. That'll turn into a song. <laughs> Their dead bodies can still give birth. Holy shnikes. That's not natural. It's so nasty. You know, the, you know, there are certain things. It's like snails and things like that. I can't vibe with them either. You know, look, they talk about the butterfly effect, and I don't believe it. Look, if I went back in time, I got rid of all the, all the cucarachas and all of the snails and slugs and all of the spiders. Um, well, but yeah, all the spiders, yeah, I swear, nothing would happen. The planet wouldn't miss them. Like, oh, I pose know. that question every year. Like, would the planet really be that much more worse for wear if all the flies just disappeared? <laughs> like, really, would it be that bad if we didn't have flies anymore? They <laughs> vomit <laughs> on <laughs> shit and they eat it. That's disgusting. Why? Yeah, and mosquitoes just, um, what's it, <laughs> facilitate um, 
blood transfer fusions. And no, Lyme no, disease. No, thank you. No, thank you. Take them. No. So <laughs> give me a spider any day of the week. I'm very kind to spiders. They pay their rent. <laughs> they you wouldn't, say, you wouldn't say that if you lived in Australia. <laughs> you, <wouldn't say> <laughs> you see a spider on the wall the size of your hand. I, I would move. I would leave. Uh, weren't you with some uh, some uh, ladies from down under when you met Dave? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I met Dave yeah. in Hawaii, and they were from they were from Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Just I don't know how I I don't know how that place is still inhabited. You, you was it? I saw something of um, Chris Hemsworth. You know, in the picture, and his face is right there, and there's a spider this size, right? And he's like that. I'm like, why would you be that close? Because <laughs> he's Australian. They're nuts. <laughs> no, and there was another picture of him. It was on the Graham Norton show. There's another picture of him pointing at a snake, and he said, "Oh, we threw it in the room because we didn't know what it was and closed the door." I'm like, okay, so why are you still there? <laughs> I I don't get you know. Hey. If you grow up in the land where Satan keeps his pets, not much is going to freak you out. <laughs> Just saying. I don't know. I don't know. I'd, I'd, I'd watch TV. <laughs> I'd see how they're living in, in other countries. I'd be like, there are no spiders. There are no, yeah, I want to go. I, wanna go. <laughs> I would. I would. I'd get on that plane. They, they've got some good programming down there in Australia. So they probably do just like throw the snake in the other room and watch TV. <laughs> yeah that, that's another way of life my ha i take my hat off to them oh absolutely because <laughs> they're, they're nuts they they grow up where satan keeps his pets they've they've got this <laughs> <laughs> and another thing i've got to say also the boot camp mm -hmm. um wasn't it had a number of us from the CFX team, and then it had, a, had another number that were local performers, you know, and actors and, and things, and actresses and things like that, who had never done this before. Um, so the, as well as finding our journey from primitive to intelligent um, animals, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, it took a lot of rehearsals and it took a lot of, um, letting go of any ego mm -hmm. and um, any notion of how you sh how a, a troll should be or that took away that comfortability so that you could actually bond as a pack you know and I remember there was one day Derek took us out of the studio um, and we were we were trolling around yeah, yeah. on, on the yeah. grass you know as trolls do um, and he would be going from level one to level two to level three, you know, and making all of this noise, <laughs> all right? And um, I think someone had to come out because they were filming <laughs> and they were hearing all of this noise, you know, but that was, I think, a, a very defining moment for um, how much someone who isn't involved in CFX or never done it before can let go of, of, of themselves and forget yeah. themselves to be, to do this because you need to do that. And mm -hmm. when, when you're in a group of CFX, whether you're all in the same scene or all doing some form of creature work or droid work in the same show, you know that you're all congregating in the same place and you're all part of the same unit, mm -hmm. you know, you're all family. And if someone has a problem, and can't do something you can step in or help them out or do something it's that cohesive and um it was an extremely intense bonding process you know and some couldn't do it for for various reasons or whatever so what we were left left with were a core team alongside um neil, neil scanlon's core team you know mm -hmm. and then for that final sequence with christian slater you know i've been there been making that journey um, and stay in there for roughly about two months, um, Tom and I. And there was one day I came in, um, I think it was while I was having my makeup done, my face had been done, I had my dressing gown on and all this kind of stuff. And I walk into this room and the whole team have turned up for this final scene. And I could have cried, you know, it was, it was, 
so unexpected. It had been just me and Tom and Liam and some of the other guys and, and, and things like and Nathan and Barbara, just a, a, a bunch of us um, intro and introducing Bonetics. Um, Bonetics is a double jointed black guy with muscles and he's on Instagram. You got to check him out. He does some really freaky stuff at which they had him doing as a troll and stuff. Um, but all of these, all of these, 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 these people from the CFX team were there, you know, and then getting geared up and, and, uh, you know, Paul Warren was talking to me for a while and he, he couldn't, he didn't know who it was. You know, and I didn't let him, I didn't let slip for a minute who it was. I'm not even sure if I was using my voice or something, but no, I did. I was just staring at him. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I, I, you couldn't work it out, you know, um, until I laughed. Um, unfortunately, you know, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So so we've got this new unit working with us, um, and then we're seeing the core team, and the numbers just mounted up in terms of performance. Um, I didn't get to see much in the monitors whenever I was on on set, um, but I did get to see a couple of seconds of that crowd scene and that one scene where he stood there and you're looking at from and the back of him, mm -hmm. and they were all uh, about to pounce on him. I did see that, and I was like, "Whoa! Oh, <laughs> Does he live? Does he live? Does he live?" I was like, "I have no idea," but I was. It just looked incredible, but that team. It wasn't just put on a suit and and get some people put on a suit, be a troll and walk around. No, mm -hmm. no. Um, Neil Scanlon's team don't work like that. And Derek spent two or three months at least developing how he was going to um, guide us through those steps, you know. Um, and rehearsal periods, oh my goodness, you don't normally get those, <laughs> you know. And we had a rehearsal period on... The last Jedi for the casino um, uh, for a couple of days. Uh, yeah. Other than that, no, you don't tend to get rehearsals. And sitting there when they're putting that face on, mm -hmm. with me, finding how he spoke was always finding that um, uh, puny and weak feeling to the dog's line that I'd, I'd do. And, and it would soon, as it got built, built up, they would soon fit. You know, and then I would go and see Jody, Jody Corp, who would put the hair on, you know, and then um, all the other bits would be attached, <laughs> you know. So it was it was quite a process, a long process for, for just that one episode. But it was so um, honouring the last trolls, the last trolls that, that you've ever seen. You know, it's like... Yeah. You saw, you saw they've evolved a little bit. Yeah, that fur is a bit browner. It's like it's getting lighter and lighter. You know, um, they move more of, or, uh, as an evolved unit from where they were before. Before it, in the movie, they kind of moved like chimps. You know, um, now they're fully upright and, and, and even even the lower class are hunched over and they get taller, taller with, with the um, amount of responsibilities or duties they have. Um, and I had a good test for that as well because I know they were filming some tests with um, Liam Cook, no, Aiden Cook, um, Liam's dad, um, who plays two tubes, you know. So um, getting to see him, and he was part of the team as well, uh, and is always great getting getting advice from from Aiden and things like that. So it was it, it was a, it was really really good experience, and then meeting the stunt team. I got to have my own fight. I didn't get a stuntman this time. That's awesome. <laughs> you did really great at getting your head chopped off. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you very much. But that was that was um, a good week or so's rehearsal, you know, um, with Borman. Um, yeah. Uh, I think at the later stage, because I was doing it with his stunt double, Luke, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that whole team, man, um, I love those guys. And just the confidence of learning the routine. It's like, I haven't done dance routines in a while, but you know, give me the steps or whatever and give me the reason why I need to move. You need to move because that ax is coming down. That's yeah. that's a good enough reason, you know? Um, and that fight sequence, yeah, all our fight sequences were proper fight sequences. 
with that they chopped and put bits in, puts in. So they were they were longer than what you saw. Um, so yeah, oh, I got I got to block uh, a blow from Ruby. That's the first blow you see. Mm -hmm. Then Borman steps in, um, and Christian Slater is, is in on that fight too. So it's and Warwick Davis too. Warwick Davis is there, and Annabelle Annabelle Davis is there, and I hadn't seen Annabelle um, since. I love her. Wars. Yeah, she yeah. is fantastic. As um. Why can't I say her name? And I know her name. It's uh, Rannon is the boy. And what is her name? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, she's amazing as Willow's daughter. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I hadn't seen her. I hadn't seen her since a Star Wars project. So I'm not even sure which one that was. But here's the story. My first day for show and tell. Um, for the Force Awakens, mm -hmm. um, I entered this room. Tom and I, uh, Tom um, Bell, um, entered this room, and Warwick is stood there with Annabelle, mm -hmm. and I'm full of Star Wars joy. And I go, mm -hmm. I go over there, and I introduce myself, and I tell him that I'm, I'm a, I'm a huge fan I'm, of Star Wars or whatever. I'm, I'm really honoured that he's here, and I get to meet him or whatever, and. You know, he was like nodding his head, and I, I know him now, so he's probably thinking, "Hang on, who let this guy in?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, and Annabelle was stood there, whatever, and and um, the, the one last thing that happened was after Kratinus and Prashi, Prashi had, had turned turned the place into a little bit of a giggle fest. And once when I was when I was walking out, um, he gave me a smile and a nod. You know, and then the next thing you know, um, I'm I'm doing these Star Wars movies, and mm -hmm. I'm doing scenes with him. You know, and I'm holding on to it. It's not, you know, it's not, I'm not going to go up to him and do that again. Like, dude, do you realize what this means? <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm freaking out. Oh, <laughs> that is so hard to hold that nerd inside. I, but I, but, I, <laughs> you know, but there's this this you get to a point where it's like. I have to honor th honor this with the talent that they've employ employed me to do. You know, I can I'm I'm, pr I'm already recording, you know, with my eyes. So mm -hmm. um, take it in and and deal with that later, you know. And then I run into I run into him obviously on set and off set with Willow and it, it was it was nice to be part of that family and that team that he had started with. He had started with the CFX department. You know, um, the journey with the new Star Wars now is with Neil Scanlon's um, CFX department, who always include him, mm -hmm. you know, and honour him and respectfully. And um, he's now with the youngsters. He's now looking at the youngsters coming up and whatever and stuff like that. And um, it's, yeah, it, there's, there's a lot of layers to to appreciate with, with these things that we're doing. Um, and for, especially from my perspective, too, you know, my connections to all those things are resonating, giving me good vibrations from my youth. <laughs> oh, call back. <laughs> good, good, good. Good vibrations. Oh, oh man. Just, yeah. And, and, and also with the beast, uh, Beach Boys, just, I was almost said Beastie Boys. <laughs> You deserve respect, but with the Beat Boys, I also oh, I got to say right I was watching a lot of their documentaries about how they recorded their sound. Um, yes, the Pet that, Sounds album, especially. And it was so, yeah, I think it was making that album, and it was, mm -hmm. and it was um, the complexities of things that hadn't been done before in the way that he was doing them, which are pretty much staple throughout recording, um, the recording industry now, and things like that. So yeah all these little things and brian wilson is a musical genius he's like mozart the way his brain works it's just startling yeah his brain his brain's been places <laughs> so that's that is the truth that is, <laughs> that is the truth so you've been you you finished willow last year yeah you finished everything with willow last year yeah what are you up to now um 
what I was doing before Willa, waiting for the next thing, you know, um, and you never know what the next thing is going to be. Um, I never, I didn't even know I was going to get a call for Willow. I knew they were, they were filming Willow. I knew they were filming Andor. Um, not a lot of us um, worked on Andor mm-hmm. on the CFX side of things. Um, and so Willow was happening and I knew they were shooting in Wales and no one had mentioned anything at all to me about any association with it or whatever. And I think it was just a random phone call my agent mm-hmm. gave to Katie. And Katie says, oh, yeah, yeah, we've just been talking about D, um, which isn't the first time that's happened. So I have to pick my, my time and say, um, Pauline, call her, call her, call her now. I've got this strange feeling. You know, um, I don't know. But uh, you just you just don't know, you know. Um, and the only work I am getting is through Lucasfilm and Disney, you know. Uh, it's a strange thing in the UK. I've been building up my CV for years. You know, my agent's been sending my CV out, my resume uh, to to all these casting directors. And my CV's slowly been growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. Um, But what keeps coming back to my agent are the same offers of uh, of being in a scene um, uh, where there's no dialogue. Um, Even Marvel even wanted to see me to do to stand in as a stand-in as a stand-in yeah and i'm like i'm like was the last yeah. time you did a stand-in job <laughs> the last time i did a no no did i <clears throat> no i've never done this oh i did this i did a, i did kind of like a stand-in it, it turned into a standing role because it was supposed to be a part uh, mm-hmm. i was supposed to get a part when i got there i got there and a the director told me that they'd given the part away to somebody else now I'd flown from the UK to LA, <laughs> and, the that, and he said, "Oh, well, I can put you in the scenes. I can keep. I can put you in a few scenes." And I'm like, after you- one night, I felt so underused, so overqualified to be standing there doing nothing. And the movie that I was in was called Woo with Jada Pinkett Smith, <laughs> and there's a scene right at the end where she's walking through the crowd. I shouldn't point this out. <laughs> This is, no, yeah, okay, I've, I've gone too far. So he's <laughs> walking in the crowd and she walks past this black dude and he's got a denim, I think I'm wearing a denim shirt or whatever and stuff like that. And um, and I was just like, ugh. That's just, I went over there for a part and this is what you gave me. So, um, yeah. so yeah, so that was the last time, but I'm like, have they seen my CV? Yeah. It's like, um yeah, because they looked at you and whatever, and they say, you look like this other guy or whatever, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like nah. So um, for me, it's it's turned into quality rather than quantity. I don't have any say in the matter. You know, and uh, that's why hopefully, if I can sort out my my passport and all that kind of stuff, you know, I might 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 have to travel for work, but over here, it's yeah, you you know you know you're amongst family because most of most of the team are that way too. Mm-hmm. You know, um, some of them are lucky; they get to work for Millennium FX, who do Doctor Who stuff, um, yeah. and some other other bits and pieces. You know, um, and, <clears throat> they get, and those companies get to work on a Warner thing or another Disney thing or something like that. So they're always kept in that mix. Only a few. Um, and the rest, uh, yeah, have to find other means for a month or a year or two. <laughs> you know, um, I don't know. I've got there's there's something in production. I'm not sure how how far it's going. Arg and the quest for the golden dragon skull. I can't remember. I remember the name. It's such a long title. Um, but it's it's based on. Um, oh yeah, the, yeah. We talked about that the first time you were on. Yeah, or early on, yeah, and that's mm-hmm. that's in development. Um, the director's been working on other things and he's been piecing that together. So I, I'm waiting to see if, if that comes to fruition. Um, but other than that, just waiting on seeing what the new new, new year brings. You know, well, I'm, I'm I could never like- guess I'll be in Willow. That you know, <laughs> yeah that that was that was not on my list of you know when when you said you were filming on location. <clears throat> Willow wasn't even was 
wasn't on my short list, wasn't on my long list. Like it wasn't on any list. I, and that was that was the easiest way to answer or to actually ex say something to anybody because anybody I said it to just assumed I'd be on hand or, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm like, okay, I'll let you think that for a while, you know, and prolong, prolong, uh, prolonging, so prolonging the surprise and the reveal. Um, but yeah, it's it's like when I was, it's like being a kid and, and you're watching um, Xena or Hercules. Mm. Or, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and you're like, oh man, I want to be in that, <laughs> you know. Um, you know I, I I can relate in a, in a small way, you know. I I have been fascinated with comic books and sci-fi and fantasy is since I didn't have memory, you know. I've I've been fascinated with it, and especially with how did they make them look like that. You know, right, right. the the process, the CFX, the the VFX, you know, I, I wanted to learn that. And now it, I get to do it for my channel, but not just that, but I get to learn from the people who made the things I was obsessed with. I That's, it's a whole different feeling. It's a whole I know, I know. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm getting goosebumps for you every time something's dropping. <laughs> You know, because these things don't drop unless, like we're saying, you, you take that leap. And that leap is just a confirmation of your passion. If you're sincere about your passion, you'll, you'll take that leap, regardless of what the answer or result will be. You know what I mean? To yeah. Um, and it's just these, you know, your interviews with these people isn't just because you heard about them last week. You know what I mean? It, yeah. It, from a place and it's that's what I mean when I say to people like a lot of people's dreams are, are techni technically coming true you know and it, and all it's taken is the perseverance of holding on to those dreams yeah you know um, people man it's not they're people you yeah. know just talk to them and I was you really encouraged me to talk to people because at first I'm like I don't want to bother them and you're like do it do it <laughs> I've reached out to Phil Lamar. It's been about a year. I should probably shoot him another message. Uh, <laughs> yeah, keep going with that. Keep, don't give up. <laughs> I really, I really want to talk to Warwick. I would, I would love to talk to Warwick Davis. He's been, I, 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 I don't know if hero is the right word, but an idol in a way of mine, a role model for since I was a little kid. Um, <clears throat> he's a for any kid who was into this stuff and had a disability and thought well I can't keep up with those people on screen because of the way I'm built and then you see Warwick and Warwick is like 10 15 years older than me you know if my knee's hurting dear god I know his is and he's just trucking along doing his job I mean he's he's awesome yeah he's awesome yeah just you know that's what I mean about supporting an icon. You know, um, he doesn't have to acknowledge himself as an icon. None of his family have to. He's just a normal guy. Icon, but yeah, but he's a normal guy. But he's a normal guy who is an icon. Yeah, you know, and you, it's, it's. Uh, have you ever heard uh, of any scandal or? tabloid or anything about warwick davis no the man he's a family man he's passionate about history he did this amazing documentary about the dwarves of auschwitz and that's what they were called uh the the lilliputians the lilliputians of auschwitz right, right. they they called them dwarves and lilliputians and he actually researched and traveled and you know did a whole documentary on them and uh something i i have been very tiny my whole life i was born with something that made my my hip and my knee and i'm missing growth plates on just on one side of my body it was substantially smaller and uh the way my knee and my leg was shaped it was you know very weak um right. i found out three years ago that it's a form of dwarfism i had no idea Right. I just thought I was super short, <laughs> just real short. <laughs> and I thought it, it's a form of dwarfism. And, you know, watching 
wore it because I have a lot of problems with my joints because of the condition that I was born with and watching him just kill these scenes every single time. Like a consummate professional is just. Yeah. Tell me your secret. Is it just tenacity? Because that's, what's gotten me by it up until this point. But I feel like you have like, my level of tenacity is maybe here and Warwick's is like out of, out of frame. <laughs> yeah, and that's the, and it's the, and it's having that love and that passion for what you do. Mm-hmm. You know, um, nothing can hold you back from loving what you do, you know? And, and that's what I mean about an icon of inspiration, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, it's same thing how I'm inspired by anybody who can achieve from 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 the lowest form of 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 the doubts that they're, they're surrounded by, you know, um, internally and externally, but they forge forward and they create something, you know, they forge forward and they're able to achieve something, um, regardless of whether they're aware of what the impact is going to be, you know, um, and it's been a part of my life for a very long time in regards to the people that I've been inspired by. You know, it's no secret I'm inspired by the journey that George Lucas had, you Mm -hmm. know, in starting this whole thing. You know, um, there was so much against him. You know, I I love watching documentaries on, is it Michael Flatley, Lord of the Dance? And he's that tap dancing dude. Um, I have an Irish grandmother. I know all about it. Right. You know, and going from (laughs) idea, you know, and trying to create this thing. You know, these accomplishments that you're seeing through people, you know, and and no matter what color of skin, no matter what gender, no matter how tall, how short, or how how wide or how skinny they are, you know, it, it, it you resonate with with that fight, um, and and even with even with my band, at the time, we were hoping it was going to open some doors, and we and as we were existing, doors were opening, you know, for other bands as well. We when you're when you're in that eye of the storm you know all you're aware of is yeah yeah yeah, we're doing this thing and you know and and some more people have come to the table more people more people this and you mm-hmm. you don't really you don't really know until once you've once you've finished or once you've left that everybody's been using your template to move things on mm-hmm. you know and it's just like wow i didn't know it would have that much of an impact, let alone, let alone the people that it's inspired who don't even do music. You know, it's inspired them to to achieve because we never said anything about it being exclusive. And that's what it means when when you see these things and you have this and you and you resonate with these these people and these achievements is the fact that nothing is impossible. And it's and it's trying to drum that into everybody. You know, when when they when they experience these things or or have an emotion about these things or they realize it for themselves. You know, nothing is impossible, so you've got to go for it. You know, that's what your passion wants, wants you to be brave. I should write some of this shit down. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've, I've tried to tell my kids because, and, and not to <clears throat> do this, but to, to piggyback off what you're saying, to expand on yeah. what you're saying. Um, when I opened my salon, I, you know, I've been a working hairstylist for almost 20 years straight. I have one leg (laughs) and that one has its issues. I've got a terrible, terrible back. I have problems with my nerves, but I had kids to raise and it was a career I'm very passionate about. It's creativity and it's different all the time. And it's working with my hands and my, my mind and my imagination. Um, <clears throat> and I had kids two feet. So I did it. You know, I just, that was the job I wanted. That was the job I stuck with. That's what I did. And I was always getting the, how do you do it? How do you do it? You know, anytime someone gets a, a leg amputation, they'll call me and they'll say, how do you do this? Like how? Oh. There's there's no magic answer to it. There's no, well, I take this pill and drink this water and toot toot, here I go. It's, well, what choice do you have? You either do it or you don't. 
Do you want to do it? Then go do it. You just have to tell yourself it's worth it. You have to go and do it. When I opened the salon, <clears throat> I started getting messages from people that I knew online, uh, mostly. <laughs> Right. Uh, there were there were a few that I did know personally, uh, but several people telling me that I had inspired them to kind of strike out and do their thing to to go do this, go do that. And, yeah. you know, they would send me messages telling me I was so inspiring. And at first it bothered me. And I would tell Dave, like, what? I, I'm not doing this to inspire people. I'm doing this because, you know, I just wanted my own thing you know I, I wanted to have a successful business and i was tired of salon managers getting mad at me for sitting down after i did a haircut I'm like you go stand on one leg and, haircuts <laughs> and come back and talk to me you got time to sit down you got time to clean no i do not that's it. let me yeah, pull out it. my civil rights for you that's, that's but, uh, but, yeah. but at first you know it did it did bother me because i'm like i i'm not doing that for this i'm not doing that for attention and Dave would say, well, maybe you're looking at it entirely wrong. It's that they see if you can do this and excel at it, then what is stopping them? Okay. And they asked the question again, how, how? And I said, well, I mean, I guess you just got to pull your socks up and fight through it. it you gotta just be brave, be bold. I say, well, I don't know how you're so much braver than me because it doesn't scare you. Oh no, that's not what bravery is. Bravery is being scared and doing it anyway, because you know that you need to not have to have to insinuates that you have no choice in the matter. Mm -hmm. um, you need to. Yeah. So I'm always scared about taking a risk. I'm terrified about, <clears throat> you know, I'm now officially retired from my job that paid me cash money money every single day and that's how i paid my bills now i'm at home and i've got this new equipment and stuff that i have to make sure gets paid off and taken care of and this is this is probably the biggest leap i've ever taken in my entire life and i am terrified but i'm doing it because i need to yeah, and you know, and you are the only person who knows you can. That's that's the difference. Actually, it was Dave. I still <laughs> on the fence about it, but it's Dave. <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't be able to handle it if you could. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I'm in awe of the people that I work with, just from their level of intelligence, the way that they see something, or the way they make something or design something. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm working with um, people like Kieran Shah. You know, um, Artie Shah, I'm working with, um, you know, um, Jonas from time to time. You know, it, we're talking about people of all shapes and sizes. Nick Kellington, you know, uh, just an immense amount of people that you, none of those things are even in the room. It's just the camaraderie of the job. And for me, I remember the first time I saw Kieran Scharf on The Force Awakens, you know, and I, I went up to him and I told him it was, it was an absolute honor and pleasure to meet him. And, and I'd been watching him on TV because I was watching Lord of the Rings and, and Harry Potter back to back and whatever. Yeah. And um, I think whoever was dressing him at the time he said, see, <laughs> see, people do know who you are or something like that. You know what I mean? You know, because um, he's, a, he's, he's a funny, humble little dude. He's like, he's probably like oh, no one knows, knows that I've done this stuff or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. You know, he could have been doing that, you know, but I love, I love Kieran, you know. Um, but uh, everybody else that you work with, you, they're, they're in, they're, there's none of this. You know, we we pull each other along. There are there are amputees that work with us. You know, one of my my good friends, Derek, who passed away, um, which I, I kind of had to deal with very quietly and and, pri and privately when that when that when that happened because I think it happened a year before COVID. I can't remember or something. And um, he was a very good inspirational um, speaker when it came to his amputee because he had both 
both legs, you yeah. know, um, from, the, APT. from the knee, you know, um, and he would coach people um, through it and things like that. Um, and it, you know, it, it made, it made no difference to him when we were on set, you know, and the, and the people that we work with, you know, look at, look at it and say, oh, oh, we can make you better ones than that. Of course you can. You make everything as you guys are wizards. It's just like Hogwarts or something, you know, and. I've had and that conversation. See, and <laughs> the, thing is, it's, the thing is, it's, it's. It's natural in that world. It's natural in that vi environment, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and um, just, you know, from the tallest to the smallest, you know, um, it's it's absolutely mesmerizing and humbling every single time. Especially when you look at someone like um, Warwick Davis or Kieran Shah, who have been in the business for for so many years. I think. Kieran's been in it a bit longer than Warwick, you know, and he's still doing it. You know, Warwick's still doing it, you know, and still leading the way. And yeah. the fact, and the fact that he has his own show, yeah, based on his own movie, yeah, yeah, the, from and the makers of, from the makers of Star Wars <laughs> made and, his and movie. Not just that he had his own franchise, Leprechaun. Yeah. Like oh, that's yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, it's it's his career is an absolute um, template for for um, uh, uh, amazement. Mm -hmm. You look at that, and you just think it is. You know, if he can do that, you know, I've got no excuse. And that's how inspiration is supposed to work these things that move you they confirm that it happens it confirms that if it can happen for them in this way it can happen for you you well, know i'd say not just that not just confirmation mm. that great things do happen when you try mm. you work for it but also i think inspiration can come to make you appreciate what you have yeah. To see what someone else has to to deal with on a daily, the heavy weight that they have to carry around, that that yoke around their neck, and they're still able to stand upright and and smile. You don't have you don't have that yoke. Mm. You don't have that. So why aren't you standing up straight? Why aren't you, you know, showing that that pride of you're here, you're alive. That's a miracle. The, the reality is that everybody mm. struggles. Everybody struggles. Yes. You know, um, and the one thing that I've come to realize is that why everybody's struggling is because life is in the way, you know, um, and life, life is like a, like a pet dog, man. It doesn't care what you're doing. <laughs> it doesn't care what you're doing, you know, isn't, look, I need this, you know, we need this, we need that, we need to do this, we need to do that or whatever. It really doesn't care. You know, um, and it's that balancing of the two. I know so many um, actors who decided that they weren't going to do it anymore because it was it was too hard. It was too much of a struggle um, because they had rent to pay, they had these things to pay, and you know, a, a, a regular job would would cover that. You know, um, and if they got themselves into a better position later on, maybe they would do some some more acting or whatever. But this is this is what life does you know um and some people can find it can have an anxiety about trusting themselves or trusting their hopes and their dreams you know and i think that's where real life achievements even in movies even in cartoons you know i think i think that's what their true purpose is to some degree in um nurturing the youth in saying that you're allowed to have this imagination. You know, Horton, here's a who. What, what, <laughs> you know, that kid's gonna be watching that for years thinking, I never saw that, <laughs> you know? Um, but it's, it's, I think that, I think that's what it is. It, and it's, it's trying to find that balance. And if, 
your passion starts pushing things out of the way so that you can do this, you've got to give it that shot. You've got to give it its moment to shine, you know, and mm -hmm. the affirmation that you have to do it is because that person's done it. That person's done it. I'm going to go get mine. I'm going to do it. Absolutely. You know, and you don't know how you're going to do it, but you, you say, I'm going to do that. Yeah. You know, One foot in front um, of the other, just go, start moving. And yeah, oh, sorry, sorry, the other little act I forgot to mention was Ali. Ali, I love little Ali. So, um, but, but this team, this 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 team, I just yeah, amazing. This is this is why you are my favorite actor to talk to, because you you understand one the work that's required to put into it. You've been doing it for a while now, but that never ever phases you. It in you are still so appreciative. You've never taken any role for granted. Every single role to you is wondrous. And um, it's almost like you have this childlike wonder every time I talk to you about a role. You have this, this I, I don't know. It's like the words fail me. This, this aura, this genuine wonderment and bemusement and almost surprise that you're doing this and it's just a beautiful thing to watch it's infectious you're you're just a very joyful person and just very appreciative and you're just a good dude and you're just so happy about every role you get to you it's the greatest role that has ever been <laughs> been offered and you you just have this sense of you were honored to be able to participate and add to the story to give wow. your touch to touch that piece of star wars and willow history yeah. i mean that you i've well, talked to some other actors okay and i'm here to tell you you're not all the same <laughs> well i well the thing is look i don't know i haven't counted the years i don't want to count the years um I'm, I'm happy with them blurring into one but i hadn't worked since solo and that's not from that's not from wanting to that's not from trying and um mm -hmm. having um castings from companies um for very tiny things not worth doing um mm -hmm. that, that i've never heard of you know, um, to then suddenly, oh, get that call. Oh, it's 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 Neil Scanlon, it's Lucasfilm, and it's Disney again calling. You know, um, it it tends to put those years into perspective. That's why I was saying, it, for me, I've got no choice. It's quality over quantity, mm -hmm. and I've been saved from from um, from being in shows where I wouldn't be able to contribute this way. Yeah, you know. Um, so so there is there is a lot to there is a lot to be be grateful for and and obviously i you know i get to look back at my journey um from 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 dreaming and wishing to um saying well okay well i can contribute to this band um and i and what do i need to do oh, okay i need singing lessons and oh it looks like i'm gonna have to do a choreography myself and 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 move on and 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 do all that kind of but stuff. But you saved money on shirt buttons. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not gonna pay. <laughs> I only need to run. I just need one. <laughs> but it's it's you look at these things now. Now, how can I? It's it's really weird because I can't have any regrets about yesterday because if something had changed yesterday. You know, I might not get to do what I'm doing today. It's almost like a butterfly effect. It works this way, not within, right? But um, <laughs> all right. Um, I look at it that way. You know, just before I got uh, the call about Willow, I had a phone call from my agent about a TV show we have over here called um, Hollyoaks. Um, it's a TV soap thing like Coronation Street, EastEnders, whatever. You know, um, and it was for a nine month, nine month contract and um, they pay, <laughs> they pay tons more than what I get paid to do. Right. Okay. Um, my agent said, think about it because she knew I was going to say, 
Yeah. And I got back to her and I said, um, I had to explain to her and she knew. I said, look, it's not because um, I don't want to do the show. It's because I hate the show. Yeah. Um, and it's it's not that show. It's I hate those. I hate shows like, like Hollyoaks. I hate shows like EastEnders. I hate shows like Coronation Street. I hate shows like um, Downton Abbey. Right. Yeah. Um, because they're drab, dreary and boring and there's no magic. I got inspired to be an actor from watching George Lucas movies and Spielberg movies. Mm -hmm. Not watching that. I've always hated that as kids. Yeah. As a kid. You know, when that's on, I'll flip over. Buck Rogers is on. OK. 18 <laughs> on. OK. <laughs> Battle Star Batska. OK. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> You know, I'm watching that. That's that's where where I'm going, um, and I had no I had no idea where I was coming, but I turned that down because while it would have been a short contract for nine months, it would have been hell. Yeah, my agent, miserable. My agent said, "Oh, I've, I I used to work on those years and years ago, or whatever, and stuff like that. People are lovely." I'm like, I'm not denying that the people are lovely. The torture of doing that you know um doing something that is the complete opposite of what has inspired me and keeps on inspiring me you know and then um it was was it a week later or two weeks later i had the phone call about willow and if i had taken that job i wouldn't have been able to do willow absolutely and i and having seen willow having been through that whole entire process and and working with Lucasfilm once again, I'd make that I'd make that choice every single time. So so it's I'm just be it I say it before I say it, it's like I'm I have to be 100 percent sincere to my passion. It's the only mm -hmm. thing that's that's gotten me this far. And I definitely definitely believe that after your performance as Falcon that you're going to start getting more calls for roles like that. You did so well and it just seemed so effortless for you that how it came across to us, it seemed just so fluid for you. You did an amazing job. It was Falcon and Saris were the, like the best parts of, of that episode. Oh, do you know that creature for you must, you know, that creature performer, Doug Jones. No, he um he played uh oh what's his name in hell hell hellboy Abe Sabian. Oh him yes, and yes, in, yes. in Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth, he was most most of those creatures, and he's yes. in Star Trek Discovery. Um, I'd con I'd connected with him a couple of times on Instagram and things like that, and I found myself in that interrogation scene channeling. Um, channeling um, Doug's performances because in movement and creature performing, it's not just the face, it's not just the head, it's the whole body that's attached to that same thought. So there's not one thing moving that isn't part of that, that isn't part of the nature of that creature or that thing that you're playing. Mm -hmm. And um, when um, Staris is um, talking to uh, Ruby, what's her name? Uh, what's her character name? Um, um, Kit. Kit, that's it. Um, when when um, Saris is talking to Kit, I'm un I'm unveiling all the tools that we're going to be using, mm -hmm. and I deliberately use those those hand gestures that Doug uses, just just paying him a little homage, you know, because you know it's that training. But it's just like, yeah, Doug would be doing it like this. So I'll be like, yeah. He he so, has that very specific finger movement you know with his hands the that that's, curve what, that's, out. What, that's, that's what i mean from the head yeah. down from the head down every move every very move. graceful yes yes very graceful yes <clears throat> yeah. i know exactly what you're talking about he's he is wonderful he really is yeah so i did a little bit of that but the, i have to i can't say enough i can't say enough about the team you know we had loads of um cfx um makeup artists taking care of the trolls um wardrobe 
um, a lot of people that I'd worked with before, you know, and, and it was, it was just like, it was like family and they were so excited about Willow. They were just so excited. They're saying like, it's fairy tale, it's magic. It's just, and, and that's what you want to hear. That's what you want to feel. Yeah. That's what you know, you know, yeah. and I know that they know that too. And it's being supported in things they're presented. Like I saw some statued, um, uh, miniature statue busts of some of, of of some of the characters and things like that, like Jonas's character, and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> where is this going? This is like, this is some next level, you know, um, eeriness and scariness in terms of monsters and things. Um, but yeah, just it's just yeah, I'm I'm still gonna be watching it for a few more times. I'm gonna. Wait until the season's completely finished. Like my mom hasn't seen any of it yet. She hasn't. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, sit her down so we can watch it. Um, he is going well. to lose it. When she <laughs> sees you. She's gonna lose it. I'm, we're so proud of you. We are so proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's it was a joy to be able to play that character and and also keep that voice. Yes. Keep that. Voice. I. I swear to you, I got a little misty eyed when you started talking and it was your voice. I was so happy for you. Like, oh. Oh, it's the whole package. Yes. <laughs> so I, I really feel like that this is going to this. This was the opportunity to open you up to more of those roles. I hope so. I hope so. Um, and I'm I'm glad that I I wasn't forgotten by by John, because um, Solo was such a beautiful piece to work on. I, I don't care how long it took. It was such. If they wanted to take a year or two in that world, I would quite happily stay there. You know, it's one of those things. So it's like I don't know who, if anybody was turned up to a thing. Oh God, this thing's just dragging. I I could care less. I'm like, let it drag. <laughs> Let it drag. <laughs> um, so, um, with that that being said, and and working with my other teammates who had been involved in those things, you know, it's just like a class reunion every every now and again, you know. And when they all turned up for that final scene with Christian Slater, <laughs> <laughs> it was. Okay. You know, and I th and I think they deliberately kept it a secret to surprise us. You know, um, I could have ruined a lot of makeup that day. You know, <laughs> had I not held back the, the the tears of surprise, but it was it was amazing, an amazing experience for that. Well, the it couldn't have been given to a, a more deserving person. Thank you. Thank you. You are excellent at what you do and you just, you got a good soul. So I just can't wait to see more. Oh, me too. Me too. <laughs> I, you know what I need now? I need a series I, where I don't die. I think John, yeah. likes, uh, John likes killing me too much. So I need something. <laughs> where How I, many times have you died now? Five? <laughs> Okay, oh. let's, all right, let's count them. Well, well, we can't do Kratinus because we didn't see Kratinus die. We just assumed that he was in Maz's castle. Well, I was counting him, but no, we didn't see Slow <laughs> and Low die either, did we? No, he's not. He's not gone. And what about Cone? Um, Con? No, he's still around. He's still functioning. He didn't die. Okay. Oh, we're doing all right. Doing okay. Yeah. So, so, so Quay, he's he died. Oh, he did. He did, <laughs> and and Falcon's dead. So you've only died twice. You, you've yes. got three, but as it, far but, as we know. But it's from the same director, so I'm getting a little suspicious. <laughs> well, I just talked to Wikipedia the other day, so I'll have to have them update the pages for those three characters. Like <laughs> unknown. That's yep. Yeah, that's not it. dead. Well, you know what? I'm an editor for Wikipedia too, technically. So I'll just <laughs> fix it. <laughs> <laughs> See, thank you so much for visiting with me today and talking to me about Willow. 
and oh, before, uh, before I go, you haven't even told me you have your favorite bits of, of Willow, like you're like enjoying the show. Um, <clears throat> my favorite bits. Well, um, Annabelle, I love her. She's she's perfect for his his daughter. She's just yeah. absolutely perfect. I'm very curious to find out what happened to Brandon and his yeah. wife. Yeah. I'd really like to know because I thought Brandon was the cutest little boy in the whole wide world in that first movie. <sighs> so I'm very curious to find out what happened to Mad Mardigan. Yeah. Um I really I I think that Prisoners of Skellen was the best episode. Hands down. Oh. So well, far. there's two more to come, but I mean, even I watched it and it was amazing to be in the episode where they changed the gears because there's always that episode. Yeah. In every season. And where... it's usually like the third or second to last. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, before I knew I was in episode six, mm -hmm. I had a feeling it was either going to be six or, or beyond that point. Yeah, so I, you just I'm hoping, it's later in the season, I think. <laughs> yeah, so I was hoping it was going to be the last episode to match up with when they saw the trolls in the trolls at the end of the last movie. I thought, oh, maybe it could be one of those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, but to be in this episode where so much, so much was happening, you had Christian Slater, of course. Um, you had the question about Borman. Um, you had. Um, uh, uh Laura going yeah. through her going through, trying to understand and you know she's getting better and better at this one thing you know um and is it Raiden 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 is it Raiden their friend um who played Flash in Spider-Man Homecoming oh Tony yes uh, um what is his name hmm, let's google it <laughs> Yeah, um, um, he got an interesting story because of um being possessed and being marked with yeah a seal. So yeah, that represses that demon. Um, yeah, that's just yeah. And then the, and then obviously obviously the relationship between Kit. Yes. You know, um, and Jade and Jade. You know, it's. They're just these they're Graydon, just, not Raven. It's Graydon, Prince Graydon. Graydon. You know, there are just these these cute, cutesy little teen moments that are just, uh, and it just reminds you. It's just like, yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a, a young, a young family, young teen movie type thing, or whatever. And you don't take it. And uh, I've been all right with the jumps. I've been all right with the jumps and. Because I, 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 once I'm in that magical realm, it's just like, okay, the 12 year old me could care less, just move. Yeah. It. Just let me see what's happening. Um, I'm very much, I'm very much like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been amazing, but you're enjoying it. Yeah. You, I'm enjoying it for, for had you had like, speed bumps, but you huh? enjoy, you've had little speed bumps, but you're enjoying it. Yeah. There, there's, there's a couple things where I'm like, eh. But then I remind myself, like you said, it's more of a kid's show. It's more of a young adult type situation. So you have to know what it is first and then appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. I think I think there's more. I think season two, they want they would want to fill out because you don't create landscapes and worlds like that without content to, to fill them with. You right. know, um, and it's nice that we have this little deserted place in the middle of nowhere you know serving a certain purpose you know who's that woman you know is he supposed to let her out you know um what's going on there you mm -hmm. know and, but there's a reason for it you know you've you've, you've you're, you're keeping us hanging on with with mad mardigan and and her brother you know and, and uh, you're drip feeding so something big is is it has to has to well they got to answer at least two questions before they end end this season or people are going to riot <laughs> they're going to be like no 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 you have to answer something <laughs> you can't just leave us <laughs> and Luke will be like do you not know our work <laughs> <laughs> Give us three more years. <clears throat> new producers. We'll get on it. 
you know, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just like I said, I grew up being told fairy tales. Now I'm in one. It's just, just wow. bucket list. Yeah. Scratched off. And I got killed by the hero. Just what? What more could you know? First one, I get killed by the mother of dragons. Now I get killed by this giant of a man. Oh, I've got to tell you this story. This story. Now, backstage, I'd get my lenses put in, right? Mm -hmm. And it's dark backstage, so you're sitting at this table. The lights are on in this tent or whatever. Put the lights in. Put sorry, put the lenses in. Let them adjust a little bit and stuff. Now, between that place and the set, it's all dark. I can't see anything. So I'm holding on to people who are leading me through to the set. Mm -hmm. You know, just as it kind of gets brighter, my eyes then have to adjust to the set. Mm -hmm. So I'm still there, people guiding me and saying, be careful, this is a pit. <laughs> you know, and things like that. You know, um, and then once they're settled, I'm fine. Right? Now, <laughs> we were on a break from that fight sequence. Mm -hmm. And we were all just chilling there. And um, Tony was there, and just a gang, and 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 Aaron was there, and Amar was there, obviously. And so um, Amar says to me, <laughs> the first time he saw me, <laughs> he was like, "What?" Because because Aaron had said to him, "Oh, that's details. You're going to be fighting him." And then he looks across to me, and he sees me being <laughs> like, oh, "I'm blind." <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing he, he says with the due concern is, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, a reassuring story in regards to Amar that he wasn't so, fighting a blind man. So could, Amar is Borman, basically. Yes, oh, my goodness, he is. He, he's such a, but he's such a gentleman. It, and he's too big for the person not to be a gentleman, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he powers over. He he's like six foot something. Yeah. You know, I'm only 5'10". So, you know, I'm I'm looking up at this dude. I'm fighting, trying to have all this aggression. <laughs> when, when, he's, when he's just, you know, he's just toying with me. He's just toying with me. And he's just going, Bonk. <laughs> <laughs> It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. You always have the best stories. You have the best <laughs> stories. I love talking to you about being on set because there's always something wild or silly or endearing that's happened. And like I said, you're infectious. You are you have this sense of wonderment when you talk about these things. And it just, it's like you, you're telling us a fairy tale, but it's it's real. It's something that really happened. So that's what I love about, that's what I appreciate about you, Dee. It's what it, I it's in the time where you can actually press playback, <laughs> you know, it's recorded in there and you're just sitting there with all these memories and just, whoa, wow, man, wow. And, and, and it doesn't all happen at once. It just happens in waves. It's mm -hmm. like, um, Borman's, Borman's stuntman, Luke, who mm -hmm. was teaching me and, 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 and think that, that fight as well as some of the other guys and things like that. But I spotted him in episode five because he's but he's one of the campers so when you see when they first see the trolls and you see this guy getting um uh, something wrapped around his leg and he falls to the ground and he goes goes sideways that's mm -hmm. Luke, yeah mm -hmm. and if you recognize his face you'll see him throughout that episode um but it's um it was that thing where i got to trust i got to trust stunt men and women you know, and not just any stuntmen, the best in, 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 in the country, in the world, yeah. they do, um, which is why they, they get employed to travel all over the world and, and do all these things. Um, and working with them and just, for, they say do that and do that. <laughs> you know, um, my suit's going to do most of the acting. You know, my face that they've stuck on me is going to do most of the acting, but just do what you're told in, in regards to, how to make something work, how to sell it. They'll tell you where the camera is, where it's coming in from, mm -hmm. um, how much they're, they're taking. You know, before, there's also a scene um, which, because you had two sequences, there were two sequences. There was me falling to my knees and then my chest hitting the ground, yeah, as if I'm decapitated. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and the other one was 
um, them rolling the head, you know. So um, I had never done uh, dropping to my knees and falling face first on the ground, <laughs> but um, they tell you how to do it and you do it. And it's like, ah, oh, I can do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, just. But well, if I ever need to fake getting my head chopped off, <laughs> yeah, and keep me posted. Keep me posted on on this on this leg that's that's being made for you, and and oh. and your and your costume, mate. Because like, oh, this like like finally, there's some magic coming in 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 um out, out of the woodworks. There's some Ahsoka coming. There's more Mandalorian coming. There's yes stuff coming. You know, I'm um, excited. So you have to get yours ready for um, um, oh, Ahsoka if, season. If, if it's not ready in time. <laughs> Those are cute. <laughs> I have a backup. Thank you, Nick Schaefer from Backyard Tardis. I like those. <laughs> this was sent to me by a friend and subscriber. His channel's called The Backyard Tardis. The Backyard Tardis. The Backyard it? Tardis. And it even says on the back, I am one with the force. And the force is one with me. So, I am, and I am no Jedi. And I am no Jedi. I am no Jedi. Now, I'm pretty excited to do the Ahsoka thing. Like, I've got my my Ben Nye cosmetics here. Ooh, look at me just making a mess and being loud. So, I've got my orange. Oh, yes, light. yes. My Ben Nye concealer. You're right my soft caramel foundation and there's a magic mixture that uh, brings that out and then there's there's a couple <clears throat> other palettes like skin illustrator palettes that i have to get in order to you know pull off the rest but I'm, right. i almost have everything yeah so. get in there, get in there. <laughs> and i'm gonna start sculpting my my cap tonight so Right. Oh, exciting. Oh, Amelia's got to help you. Come on. No, she's not. She's 14. <laughs> <laughs> she's totally 14. So, oh, is, it, oh, is, she, is she the daughter or like, um, <laughs> of those little people that are in, in that in that fifth episode? <laughs> what are they called? Um, in the brownies, in the brownies. Did you see no, that? No, that's that's my oldest daughter, Emma. Okay, my <laughs> oldest. Is I could say, what a the sky is so blue today. She'd say, no, no, mom. Everyone knows it's periwinkle. <laughs> Ugh. Like she is the most unimpressed person of me. Like she's so unimpressed by me. And uh, she just, she, she does not have, have time for my, my malarkey <laughs> ever. So but I still love her. She's still my pickle puss. Oh, okay. Oh, that was, yeah, that, mm, you could you call it that much. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. why I call her pickle puss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That could, that could be something in there. <laughs> there could be something it's in there. Sour patch kid, but without the sweet. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you ever tried calling her your little flower? You know, that might, that might bring out a different. My uh, grandma calls her <laughs> rosebud. Oh, her bless. Her. She likes, <laughs> right. Is she cool with that? Yeah, yes, she loves that. And she can be very sweet, just not to me right now because she's 18. And now that she's a legal adult, um, she knows everything. Um, I only say he said she's at that rude age. <laughs> yes, she's at that rude age. When he said that, uh, when Kevin said that, that just like, yup. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Got that. But, uh, <clears throat> the um thank you thanks for continuing to come on this show and hanging out with me and making me look good i, I really appreciate it. look man we got we got to speak about comics man <laughs> every time and we got to watch that because we get lost in that subject and uh, just keep going <laughs> I, have to, I might have to book in a book in some comic time sessions and stuff and forget start kind of like well i've got yeah. um some ideas like i'm gonna start doing some go back to doing live shows too after the new year and i have right. 
several topics I want to talk about and they're really good ones. My, um, my series, I've, I've kind of accidentally started this live show series on superheroes and it just happened, but superheroes in philosophy. And so I've just been kind of making bullet point topics underneath that, uh, you know, because we will, we'll talk about one thing and then we'll, we'll talk for hours on it. And then a couple of weeks later, I'm like, Oh, I should have mentioned this. So I just came up with some options and I'm like, I'm just going to start reaching out to some of my favorite comic book nerd friends and like pick one of these topics and we'll do a show on it. So I'll, I'll send you that. And you tell me uh -huh. which one, just which one you fancy. Yeah. Oh, depending on depending on the timing of it, <clears throat> um, I've I have to admit that since the movie The Spider Verse, come here. <laughs> she stomped away. It's fine. <laughs> since since the movie um, The Spider Verse, mm -hmm. I've had more of an interest in um, the storylines for Peter Parker going into those multiverses mm -hmm. right but it comes from when they originally did it so i've got a scrap all of of my preconceived notions of all of that because they are retelling and redoing these stories um but since that i've been really enjoying this miles morales yes aspect you know yeah. um, and also i realized that the only time we've ever seen the real spider-man mm -hmm. is Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse because Spider-Man does not shoot real webs straight out of his wrists. But, no, Andrew Garfield had the mechanism and so did Tom Holland. Yes, but um, uh, Peter Parker isn't some cool skateboarding kid either. No. So, and, no. And, and Peter Parker's Uncle Ben dies, not his Aunt May. Mm -hmm. The only one that we've had that is the real Spider-Man mm -hmm. appears in the, into the Spider-Verse. Spider yeah, you're you know right. I mean? So I'm like... For me, that's a, that's a that's a revelation that happened just a few months ago, right? But I'm like, yeah, <laughs> because I because you know I'm a Spider Man fan, so mm -hmm. you know I, I put things aside just to enjoy the movie. You know, it's like, oh, it's a new version. Oh, okay, oh, this is oh they changed it like that. So I'm they're trying they're slowly <laughs> they're tr like brainwashing me into this new trend of sort of star of star wars of, of spider-man movies mm -hmm. um and so with miles morales giving me the real spider-man for however many seconds i all of a sudden i'm like reinvested i'm like oh, okay i'm like ah oh. I'm, I'm like really enjoying this stuff now so yeah it might be miles or it might be something else i do like miles morales um i like spider-man and I like Miss Marvel because I feel like she's in the same vein as Spider-Man. She's she's a fan. She's a fan and she's a nerdy kid. She's just a normal young teenage kid that something spectacular happens to her. And what would one of us do if if something like that happened? How would we react? That's that's why I love Miss Marvel. But we are we are at about 3 hours. And that's a lot of footage for me to sit through. Yeah, good luck. So, <laughs> I'm gonna have to say that deep deep did that's all, folks. <laughs> but he, thank you again. You can find D on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, and I'm gonna put his info down here so you can follow him and tell him hi because he loves talking to you guys. He does. This is why he does it to talk to people like you. But until next time, nerdlings, have a wizard weekend, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. The dogs. <laughs> <laughs>